Notre Dame tradition continues as the Irish seniors acknowledge the call to play like a champion for their final home game. Boston College awaits the Eagles soaring to 7-2 this year, 25th in the nation. The self-acclaimed other Catholic football program looks to strengthen its bowl appeal today with an upset win here at Notre Dame. 80,000 plus another sellout to see the Eagles and the Fighting Irish. Cool, cloudy day, a brisk in the high 40s as we welcome you to Kenberg with Pat Hayden, who is about to receive the 25th Silver Anniversary National Foundation Award with your class. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a game of considerable bowl appeal. Boston College 7-2, they're assured of going to a postseason game. But should they win today and win again at Virginia Tech? And don't count that out. They could be playing on January 1st in the Gator Bowl. Notre Dame, 5-5. Five and five. Disappointing, but if they could win today and next week at Stanford, they would be in a bowl game. So plenty at stake today. And for of line. Well, that number 76, the right tackle, Darnell Alford, he may be 1,000 pounds <laughs> himself. We'll watch him move people around today. Well, the, uh, we're not very original on these Notre Dame no, no, telecasts. No. It seems like every week we say the th same thing at this point. Jarius Jackson, the quarterback for the Irish, says coach called him a warrior. He has been the man, and he again is going to have to do it. Well, you know, in, in the career passion chart, you surprise to some people, Jarius Jackson has really moved up the charts, fifth of the all-time chart. But you mentioned we talk about him every week that the Irish need to be more two-dimensional and dependent upon him too much. But today they're going to have to depend on Jarius again because the offensive line is really hurt. Three new starters. Scarola gets his first start. Mahan gets his first start. Bowler's just his second. And this is an offensive line. They're not going to be able to pound it right at Boston College. They're going to have to really play on the perimeter, I think, of Boston College's defense. And with the injury plague, the Irish are down to two tailbacks and two fullbacks and the secondary knocked around as well so it'll be under that uh, demand that especially Sean Mahan symbolizes the, the challenge today uh, the sophomore in his first ever start and the offensive line meets this man Chris Hovan from Boston College 290 pounds and all America on his way to the senior bowl he's got the war paint on it's the Irish and the Eagles of Boston College the opening kickoff coming up. Back at Notre Dame, an emotional final game for the seniors of the Irish as they take on Boston College. Bob Davy is 5-5. Five and five. The questions are becoming more and more penetrating. A couple of wins would be the answer as he goes against Tom O'Brien, the third-year coach of Boston College. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Dick. I'm here with Bob Davy. Bob, you told us yesterday that these next two weeks are the Pride Bowl. What exactly did you mean by that? Let's call it what it is. That's what it is. You know, we're a five and five football team. Been through a lot this year. We got a lot of injuries, but that's what it is. And that's why I know we're going to play well. Because one thing this football team has, and one thing this coaching staff has, is a bunch of pride. And you spoke to your seniors specifically, senior day here. What did you say to them? I told them they're going to go on and do a bunch of great things, but they're going to remember this for the rest of their lives. Bob, good luck to you today. Jim, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, back upstairs to you, Dick. All right, Jim. As you see, Jarius Jackson, and uh, there's a man who will be chasing and pressuring Jackson in the offense of Notre Dame all day with his war paint on. John Randall, the Minnesota Viking star, is his idol. He's from uh, St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland, played with Dan O'Leary, the tight end end of Notre Dame. And if you, <laughs> I've seen a lot of serious young football players. This man gets A plus in that regard. They'll make a lot of All-America teams. Notre Dame won the toss and deferred to the second half, so it'll be Boston College with the football first. And one of those returning, number 32, uh, man from Indiana, Indianapolis, DeWan Daniels. He took one back 100 yards to start the Syracuse game to spark that victory for Boston College. And it's two DeWan Daniels at the eighth. Out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. 24 yard return and here comes uh, Tim Hasselbeck the junior from Norfolk Massachusetts the son of uh, former NFL tight end Don Cook LaCare Palaza Zukaskis and the big right tackle 340 pound Darnell Alford. They're good. Hasselbeck has Cedric Washington handful of yards away from a thousand. Ryan Birch won't carry much. He's the blocker at fullback. Crittenden and DeWalt. DeWalt is the leading receiver. He has 36 on the year and the tight end and Boston College always seems to have a good one. Brian Arntz. There's Big Alford. Talk about anchoring the side of the line. <laughs> Hasselbeck 
into the flat complete to Washington and Washington bumped out of bounds at the 38 yard line after a gain of six. Joe Ferrar, Ferrer, he said he'd yeah. rather be called, although it was Ferrar earlier this year. It makes it interesting. <laughs> Weaver, Legree, Williams, uh, Brad Williams starting his 26th consecutive game for Notre Dame and Lamont Bryant, the front four. Ferrer, Denman, and Nix, the backers. Clifford Jefferson, he's had a couple of tough weeks. Tennessee and Pittsburgh picked on him. Devlin Harper with uh, Sanders and Cooper, three seniors in the secondary, playing their final game. It's Washington again to the 40-yard line and stuffed shy of the first down. Brings up third and two, and it was Denman and Nix leading the charge. Yeah, I think I saw a flag there late in the, uh, in the pile. And face mask call against the Irish. No first down with it. During the run, it's a five yard face mask against the defense. First and ten. John Smith is our referee. It's an all Big East crew. Well, there's, yeah, yeah, well, there's Ronnie Nix, I think number 34, who got his left paw right on there. Oh, first down, Boston College at the Eagle 45. Hasselbeck swings it to Washington. <laughs> Good defensive play coming up to make the hit, Anthony Denman. Denman, the young junior linebacker, actually uh, would have a couple more years of eligibility from Russ, Texas, and he's been one of the stars for the Irish. Absolutely. I think if you have to give an MVP on the defense or Greg Madison's defense, I I'd give it to Anthony Denman, number 39. This is the guy who started as a tailback when he was first recruited here at Notre Dame and then moved to outside linebacker. Now he's the inside guy calling signals and making plays like that. Denman number two and tackles with 70 behind a Johnny Sanders the safety man out of the shotgun Hasselbeck on second and long fires incomplete the receiver knocked down incidental contact what a rush by Rocky Boyman BC, uh, I, I guess people would consider them somewhat a surprise at 7-2. and two. I mean, I've been impressed with the way they've been able to control some games, win some close games, play hard the fourth quarter, and I think Notre Dame would have to label a, a disappointment at 5-5. Five and, five. and Hasselbeck, you see his numbers as he follows his brother Matt, who was also wore number 7. They both admire John Elway. Hasselbeck inherited uh, his brother's number. He's now backup quarterback for Favre at Green Bay. Third down and 13. Hasselbeck underneath to the tight end, and it's Arndt who moves to the 50-yard line, five yards shy of a first down, and Denman another tackle. Now the punt team on for Boston College. Kevin McMyler, a freshman from Dallas, the punter averaging just 36 on his first season. And Julius Jones, the talented freshman from Big Stone Gap, Virginia, stands at the Irish 10. Still put in the end zone. That's a good punt. That's a good punt. Very good to the six yard line. And when we return after that 44 yard punt, it'll be Notre Dame's first possession deep in their own end. Two minutes gone. Opening quarter. And welcome back to Notre Dame. Their first possession, the Irish lineup with Ballers, Scarola, Mirandi, Gandy, and Mahan, the rebuild offensive line. We'll see how that chemistry uh, works today. Jarius Jackson with Fisher and good speed. Gatherall and Brown outside each with 31 catches and Jabari Holloway the tight end. Although as they break huddle we see Rakai Nelson who's been out with a knee injury since the Oklahoma game. Nelson was leading the Irish with 21 catches early and he gets the start. And Jackson from his own end zone going long and it's Nelson. It's open and Nelson at the 50 has to slow down. Well, that would have been a touchdown. You know, good point, Dick. You know, nice play by Jerry Jackson, but if you throw that a little bit earlier, or out, it's a touchdown. Rakai Nelson was open by 10 yards. Now, indeed, it was, what, a 45-yard gain. Rakai Nelson's running up as a flanker on the right. Good fake, uh, play action fake inside the Fisher. They're not going to be able to run the ball with consistency today. They're going to have to beat him in the air. Rakai Nelson was open by 10 yards. He had beaten Ramon Johnson, the left corner for Boston College. First down at the Eagle 49. As Jarius Jackson continues to compile a lot of passing yardage and out of toss. And it's Fisher. And Fisher breaking a tackle inside the 30-yard line. 
sophomore from Euclid, Ohio. A big run. Well, Kevin Rogers said to us yesterday, he's the offensive coordinator of the Irish. Because of this new offensive line, we can't pound it. We're going to play on the perimeter. First one was a big pass play to the right side. They come back with an option play. Another perimeter play spins it and deals it to Tony Fisher for a big game for a first down. And the 225-pound Fisher almost broke that final tackle from George White and took it all the way home. O'Leary and Holloway, two tight ends. Fisher the tailback. Fake to him. And the throw. Open is Getherall. And Getherall with his 32nd catch. Nearly 10 more yards for the Irish. They get a 45-yard opening pass to Nelson, a 20-yard run by Fisher, and now about 10 to Getherall, as uh, may have to measure for the possible first down. As they do, here's the BC Eagle defense with the star Hovan at left end, Garay, Willits, a veteran, and Newman. As they go to the 4-3 this year, and that is where Frank Chamberlain, 44, has blossomed. He won the Nagurski Award against Syracuse. 25 tackles in one game. Bradley and Williams are the outside backers. Ordway and Johnson at the corner. Veteran Pedro Serino at safety with George White. It is another first down Notre Dame at the Boston College 19. This drive uh, started at the six yard line three plays ago. The Irish with 75 yards and three tries. Into the flat incomplete as uh, it appeared. It like hit someone's helmet. It hit one of the offensive line's helmet. Just kind of like throwing a rock on the pond. Then skipped it up wide uh, of Joey Getherall. Well, you know, Jerry's Jackson, as we said earlier in the uh, in, in our opening, he's had a terrific career, a really two-year starter, his last game uh, here at Notre Dame Stadium. But this year, they have not been able to really develop that consistent counterpunch, and he has had to carry virtually the entire offensive load. Good speed and Fisher in the eye behind Jackson. Maybe audible. Being to a new play. Get her all outside left. Here comes the option. And Jarius Jackson keeps, breaks a tackle to the 10 to the 9 yard line and close to another first down. And there's no question this Irish team is fired up early. Ramon Johnson made the tackle in the secondary for Boston College. Well, for those of you who have watched Notre Dame over the last two years, you realize you do not arm tackle Jarius Jackson. You know, you think he's a quarterback, he's going to go down easily, but he doesn't. Well, you got to get your helmet on the right side. You can't. You can't uh, arm tackle. Good blocking there by O'Leary, the tight end. Downfield, Getherall, number 18, doing a job. And Jackson uh, in his final home game from Tupelo, Mississippi, the some 235 pounds now has it first and goal just outside the Eagle eight-yard line. Fisher and he's to the five. And then smothered by several legal tacklers. Scott Bradley, one of those, early on the hit. Well, with a pass on the opening play, Jackson now has passed Joe Theismann, number four all-time in career passing yards. Many of those names, great names in uh, Notre Dame lore, played uh, seasons that were more compact, nine and 10 game schedules. But in Jackson's behalf, he's had only two seasons as the man at quarterback. Second and goal at the five. Bobby Brown, the lone wide receiver, top of your screen. Toss to Fisher. Gets the block. Stays on his feet. Touchdown, Notre Dame. That, that Hayden, was a very impressive drive. Perhaps the best of the entire season for Bob Davies. Well, in an opening drive, Dick, I think sets the tone for the entire half. And their big plays, just as Kevin Rogers uh, was hoping, the offensive coordinator came on the perimeter. There's Kevin Rogers. And, and the two option plays, that last one there for a touchdown, a big 45-yard pass play was the first, but some big plays all on the perimeter. Jim Sanson adds the extra point, 7-0. Tony Fisher's third touchdown run of the year, capping a 94-yard drive in just seven plays. It took the Irish just two minutes and four seconds to capture the lead, 7-0. Welcome back. Tony Fisher with his third rushing score of the season. The sophomore gives the Irish a 7-0 lead and uh, capping a 
startling opening drive uh, as the Irish dominated the Boston College defense. And that uh, opening pass of 45 yards set the tone. Sanson to kick it off. Carlton Rowe and Dewan Daniels are deep for Boston College. And it's Daniels, the youngster from Indianapolis. Breaks out of a tackle and burrows across the 25-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown play, Dick. You know, when, when wide receivers block, and this is Bobby Brown against Ordway, number 28, the corner. When wide receivers block, you have chances for big plays. And this is Bobby Brown. We talked about this the last, the senior's last game at Notre Dame Stadium. I mean, if he doesn't get Ordway, I think he has a shot of making the tackle. And last week, Bobby Brown was the featured receiver, 12 catches, 200 yards. But he's an unselfish guy. And he uh, gave Ordway the feel that it was a pass yep. play, kind of pulled him over yep. into a position where it was an easy block. And Brown, uh, Bob Davey had a lot of nice things to say about him and what he might be some 20 years from now as the give is inside to Cedric Washington for a couple, three yards. Uh, back to, uh, to Brown, uh, Dad asked him yesterday, Coach Davey, and with these seniors, and you look ahead 20 years, uh, which one you think uh, might be really in a prominent position? He said, well, yeah, Bobby Brown just has so many gifts He's thinking about a political career. He likes to go to law school, said he wants to take a year off before uh, uh, entering law school. And of course, hopes to play on Sundays next year. But uh, nice to hear a coach talk about a player that way. It'll make a difference. The pass it is complete and then dropped by Will Green. Green uh, in the flash. Bobby Brown actually told us yesterday too, coming down and uh, for the very last time, number 88, he said it was going to be very, very special coming down that last time, and this is a tradition at Notre Dame. You know, you know, actually, the op-ed page today, in the local paper, there was an article about Bobby Brown, some fan, he had to get a, a ticket to a disabled kid, and uh, the family was thanking Bobby Brown for that as well. Third down and long. Hessel back incomplete, trying to hit Ray Crittenden's son, uh, Derek Crittenden. Ray played with the New England Patriots, a wide receiver. Or was that uh, Jamal Burke out there? It was Burke. A lot of short arms out there right now. I mean, uh, I, I, was that, I think it was Burke. Yeah, it was Jamal Burke. Yeah, Jamal Burke. It, that was a little Venus de Milo there with uh, those arms. Yeah, there's no question this is a spirited Notre Dame team today. That's not the uh, Irish team that went to Pittsburgh a week ago. Yeah, they were very flat. Nice high kick. Fair catch. And uh, Julius Jones bumping into his own man. A flag thrown by the referee back at the 30-yard line. A 35-yard punt by Kevin McMyler. No and personal foul against uh, the Eagles. Ball at the 37 of Notre Dame on the fair catch. There's Tom O'Brien who's done a fantastic job in his three years of breathing life back into this BC program. The gambling scandal of three years ago and just wondered if the Eagles would it survive uh, all the negative uh, news the players involved and here they bring a man in the former uh, Navy man went to Annapolis coached under George Welsh at Navy and at Virginia. He's quiet and he's strong and he's disciplined and three years. He's got uh, Boston College going to a bowl game first time in six years. Done a remarkable job. Four and seven four and seven now seven and two at this point. Good tough football team. You know, not overly talented but very very tough. Won some close ball games. Now well, they're going to mark this off from where the fair catch was made. Here's the answer. Personal foul against the kicking team. The 15 yard penalty has been declined. First and 10. So on that particular call, it isn't marked from uh, the spot of possession. Declined by Notre Dame as they keep the ball at the 37 yard line. Now, but Boston College right now needs, needs to you know, slow them down a little bit. They need a stop for a no yards or you know, a minus two. Right now, I think, I think they're just shocked at, at the uh, speed in which Notre Dame scored on that opening drive. And there's a guy that, that puts a lot of stops on you, Chris Hovind. Javen Hunter and Rakai Nelson, both wide receivers to the left. And on first down, they got four four wide receivers in the game. Good quarterback draw. They, they, they've run a lot of these with uh, Jarius Jackson. Actually, they split the tight end up, and there is the running play. 
And uh, Boston College was ready for it as Scott Bradley came up from linebacker position to make the tackle. Gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Well, you said uh, you were talking to about Jarius Jackson being a warrior. That's exactly what uh, Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator, says. You know, he gets beaten up so badly. It's Kevin Rogers right here. And uh, he gets beaten up so badly every week, Jarius Jackson, because they don't really, you know, have a lot of counter punches that it, he didn't really can't practice until late Wednesday. Nicely you drew the X there because uh, he said he didn't like the zero. Looked yeah. too much like uh -huh. a bullseye. <laughs> Here's the toss, and Fisher dropped for no game. Maybe a loss of a yard. Back at the 38-yard line, and there's Chris Holvan making his first statement of the afternoon. Yeah, Chris Holvan, this will not be his last statement of the game, though, Dick. A, a guy that just kind of keeps coming, keeps coming, number 95, and uh, just hustling down the line of scrimmage. Tom O'Brien, I, I thought, said something amazing about Holvan to us this week. We were in Boston on Thursday. said, you know, of all the guys I've been around, he is, there's never been a guy that's worked harder off the field than Chris Holvan. Yep, you know, and he coached at Navy, coached 15 years at Virginia. And an injured eagle on the play, and his number obscured uh, from our angle. to be one of the defensive backs. Looks as if it could be George White, number 40, one of our cameramen with a better angle than uh, we have. Let's go back and uh, see the play again as uh, Ovan makes the tackle. Oh, oh. ouch. Ouch. Joey Goodsby didn't need to have that last push, and that was number 40, George White. Well, yes. Just in the wrong place. Too many people yeah, around you, yeah. and your leg caught underneath. And uh, amazingly, he walks off the field showing uh, no effects, not he's, even he's, a limp. He's Ooh. more limber than you or I, I'll say that. Oof. When you think about this game and what it does to oh. the physiology of men, we are yeah, terrific it's, machines, aren't it's, we? It's what, I, I mean, those guys, not us, yeah. but I mean. I want my kids to play tennis. <laughs> yeah. Third down and nine for Notre Dame. Yeah, and I think it's a really, or very early in the game, obviously, but important down, an important down for BC's defense. Doug Bissett, 18, replaces White at safety. Holloway, the tight end, splits out to the left with Fisher in the slot left. So here's another new look with Brown and Getherall both to the right. Jackson puts it to Getherall as he tumbled over the middle of first down at the BC 46. 16 yards for Getherall on his 33rd catch of the season. He is really an anomaly. When I say about Joey Getherall, he's 5'7", 175 pounds, but his area of the field of Notre Dame Stadium is between the two hash marks right over the middle of the field. Here he is. A slant route well thrown by Jarius Jackson. And, and the thing about Joey Githerall, when he gets his hands anywhere near him, it's going to come down, he's going to come down with the, with the catch. Jay Johnson, senior, is to the right as he makes his appearance. And uh, inside they go to the fullback good speed for little or no yardage. And if there's been a disappointing aspect of this offense for Notre Dame this year, that's it at fullback good speed and Lipinski. When they have carried, not much gained, and they really haven't blocked well, according to their coaches. They've needed more run support out of their blocks. Here's the amazing thing is, is the longest 12 yards in 43 carries. Now, particularly in an option offense, well, every once in a while, a fullback's going to pop through for a 40 or 50 or 60 yard game. They just have not had any long runs out of the fullback position. They have to get productivity out of that fullback spot to improve. They're both sophomores, and they figure to be much better a year from now. Jackson sees a man open, and it's Fisher who breaks the tackle. And he's to the 10 yard line. Ordway finally got him to the turf. 38 yards as Fisher lined up out of the backfield as a wide receiver. He has been a pretty good receiver for the Irish this year. And Jarius Jackson is on. You know, a few weeks ago we saw him against Navy and then against Tennessee. Didn't throw the ball particularly well. Here he is, Fisher, right number 12 in the slot. No one even comes close to cover him. And then he kind of dodges a guy. Real smart thing. He kind of avoids the center, shifts arms to the ball from left to right because he felt the pressure coming from his left side. Mr. Ohio football 
as uh, he played for Euclid High School in Ohio. On first down, it's Julius Jones, and Jones untouched has another Notre Dame touchdown. The freshman, 11 yards for the score. It's 13 nothing. line has answered the bell for Notre Dame when they're two drives. Jim Sanson in to try the extra point. Now to walk on James Caputo's hold. Right down the middle and it's 14 to nothing. So this line with all the injuries starting two men for the first time in Scarola. And Mahan, and only a second start, Kurt Vollers, who uh, got the call last week at Pittsburgh. And uh, they have protected, and they have uh, blocked incredibly well on the run as well. A flag down on the extra point. Dead ball, personal foul against the defense. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. They offset. Results of the play, you get the AT. So Julius Jones adds to the Irish lead a 63 yard drive in six plays and Notre Dame enjoys a 14 nothing advantage. Welcome back the Saturday before Thanksgiving all the great football rivalries today. Hannah Storm will have the scores for you at halftime and of course periodically you'll see them run along the bottom of your screen Notre Dame and Boston College the only two Catholic universities still with a division one football program and the Irish prevailing 14 nothing early still seven minutes left in the first quarter Ryan Scarola the sophomore from Export Pennsylvania his first start yeah he is number 72 right down here watch him come out and pull and, and then kind of I don't know if this is a block or a squat or a sit or it's very effective whatever it is Dick <laughs> allows Julius Jones to get in but his very first start for the injured Jim Jones and Julius Jones uh, the freshman has his second rushing touchdown of the year. Two very quick drives as the Irish needing only a total of five minutes to score two touchdowns. One drive 94 yards, the other 63. And Tim Hasselbeck, the quarterback, has to settle his team down. Oops. And the charge by Lamont Bryant. It was a tender little uh, charge, wasn't it? He says uh, he was induced, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. that happens. Dead ball, offside against the defense. Five yards remains first down. No inducement there. <laughs> he hates now that it happened. First down and five. Well, we invite you to log on to msnbcsports.com. Click on a special section entitled NBC's Notre Dame Central, and you're, you're trying to determine who the Irish MVP is. I have nominated five. You can log on, and at a halftime, Hannah Storm is going to reveal the leaders in the fan voting. As Hasselbeck and the keeper gets about four and a flag down. A reminder, msnbcsports.com. Uh, you can vote for the Notre Dame Most Valuable Player. No, you can't vote for Paul Horning. He's not, it's this year's team. It's one of the. Uh, it's got to be someone yeah. this year. Yeah. Play. Mm -hmm. Well, another penalty against the, the Eagles. You know, the Eagles, well, we were in uh, Chestnut Hill on Thursday, really fired up about this game. They felt Notre Dame spoiled uh, their senior day last year, uh, their home game, and Tom O'Brien felt his team was uh, ready to go. But a lot of penalties and a dynamic Irish offense that get them, got them a 14 point lead. Holding against the offense. Ten yards assessed. He spotted a foul. Remains first down. Now instead of second down and one, it'll be second down, 15 for Tom O'Brien's team. And here's where you think screen draw. Uh, if, if you're Tom O'Brien, he gets some of it back. Come out in a spread formation with Hasselbeck in the gun. Good protection. He's got a man and a first down at the 35 yard line as Derek Crittenden, the senior from Annandale, Virginia, makes the catch. It's good for 20 yards. Derek Crittenden does a real good job of just kind of feeling this route. Down the sideline, knows exactly where the, the first down mark is. Goes around Clifford Jefferson, who's kind of struggled this year. 
You know, they, they, they in the Bible, the offensive coordinator says, hey, we want to work on Clifford Jefferson today. Well, yeah, he's had a lot of uh, business, hasn't he, the last yeah. couple of weeks. Tennessee and Pittsburgh throwing in his direction. Hasselbeck can't elude the rush as it was first. Number uh, 94, Andy Wisney, who got a piece of it and turned him around, and the uh, help came for the Irish. You know, for the Irish defensively, I think the biggest problem this year is putting has been putting pressure on the quarterback. But Wisney's number 94 down here. Big fan of wrestling, uh, wants to be the master of destruction in WWF wrestling when his career is over, but gets a good push, push there. Lamont Bryant there as well. Wisney. And Sean Mahan starting uh, in the offensive line today for the Irish, both uh, from uh, Jenks High School, that great program outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Timeout called by Boston College with 5.39 remaining in the opening quarter. Notre Dame 14, Boston College nothing. A year ago at Chestnut Hill, a heartbreak for Boston College. They were down inside the five, four plays to go. And Mike Cloud, first down, second down, third down, couldn't get in. Then on fourth down, Deke Cooper met him in the hole. And Boston College denied. Notre Dame wins 31-26. And that's the picture taken from the sidelines on fourth and goal. How hard are you going to work this week? Those posters all over the locker room at Boston College. They want to answer that positively but Notre Dame has uh, been in strong denial early with that 14 nothing lead and Deke Cooper will remember that tackle as one of the highlights of his career here with the Irish Deke who wants to go to graduate school he said why don't you tell my dad on the air I don't, I don't want to approach it yet <laughs> Hessel done to Washington is out to the 40 yard line a gain of 10 it'll bring up third down and five Clifford Jefferson, the tackler. Uh, again, this has been a uh, you know a, a tough-minded Boston College team all year long, Dick. And a down 14 points very early. This was not the scenario, obviously, they had thought about. But uh, this is, these are the times of the game when your quarterback and Tim Hasselbeck is a tough guy. He, you know, he played special teams uh, as a freshman, as a redshirt freshman. That's the kind of kind of guy he is. But he needs to to pick up this first down, keep something alive here. Third down and five. Hasselbeck doesn't see the Irish defender, and he gets him from behind Rocky Boyman. Boyman was tracking and has the sack. Way to go, yeah, uh, a few plays ago, Rocky Boyman almost got to Hasselbeck. This time, he does. I mean, Rocky Boyman is the kind of guy, number 30 over here, that if you play doubleheaders in football, he'd sign up for both games. Just loves to play the game. I have not seen Notre Dame rush the passer as well as they have thus far in this ball game this season. Well, we'll talk about the lack of production from fullbacks and on defense. It's been the lack of yep. pass rush that's been their Achilles as Julius Jones fair catches at the Notre Dame 28 yard line. 42 yard punt by Kevin McMiler. A timeout with 417 left in the opening quarter. The Irish impressive 14 nothing. <laughs> that boy, no one heard it, but it got it in. From his own end zone, goes long, and it's Nelson, it's open, and Nelson. Yep. Big plays in the pan. Maybe it'll be much better uh, a year from now. Dick, it's Jim. Uh, George White, sprained left ankle. He's back on the field right now. And he's okay. Big passes. So they're both touchdown runs. Okay. You got it? We do that one after the kick or right out? Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Where are you anyway, man? You, you disappear on us? On the uh, 22. Okay. Well, listen, you know that leprosy, yeah. uh, you don't get that leprosy. You can get yeah, closer absolutely. to us. You're going to do it, it to you. before they play? <laughs> okay. From his own end zone. Go! You coming out with the package, you're gonna run play first. Okay. All right, you got it. <coughs> well, Pinsky in. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't, no, no, I don't show that. I don't like that. Nuke. Nuke Rockman. 
13 plays the Notre Dame offense facing only one third down challenge as they have moved the ball at will against this BC defense thus far. They start from the 27 and with the option Jarius Jackson blockers in front. 35 and almost to the 40 a first down for Jackson out to the 39 yard line Marco Williams and uh, Frank Chamberlain bump him out. This has not been a good Irish team on the road this season Dick as we both know but at home they have been tough and, and, and much more spirited than they were against Pittsburgh a week ago. Only loss at home to Michigan State and we're in that game to the middle of the fourth quarter. They're 0 4 away from Notre Dame on the season and will finish at Stanford in that high powered offense of the Cardinal next Saturday. Play action Jackson firing. Incomplete intercepted on the deflection. It is Ramon Johnson who has bumped out of bounds near midfield. So the ball deflected off Rakai Nelson and into the arms of Johnson, who has his second interception of the year. Well, his first interception, he ran back for a touchdown. He had that in mind. This one. Again, just maybe a little bit too long for Nelson, but but catchable. Maybe a little too high. And again, that, that's the old drill. Everybody talks about the tip drill. That's what you do every day in practice. And the Irish, you know, on offense, they, this is where they've had some problems turning the ball over this year. 12th interception for Jarius Jackson this season. That Ramon Johnson knows how to make money plays. You know, we're going to talk about that later. He's got quite a portfolio. Oh, I knew you were going to just shoehorn that one in there. <laughs> no, we'll have plenty of time later. First down at the 47. And it's Washington looking for a block. Gets one. And he's into Notre Dame territory and pulling over an Irish tackler at the 45-yard line. Ronnie Nix finally makes the stop. Cedric Washington, I think what coaches like about Cedric Washington is, you know, he doesn't try to dance around, doesn't try to, you know, for a 40 yard run. Watch these guys up front. LeClaire number, uh, LeClaire number 50 in particular does a great job, as does Michael Cook. But Cedric Washington, you know, if there's four yards there, he's going to, you know, squeeze it out for six or seven. 13 yards today and 985 for the season for Washington, who wants a thousand. Get very little on this play as Lamont Bryan drags him down at the 44. It'll be third and one. Yeah, another grand weekend here on the campus of Notre Dame. Uh, had a chance to go over and watch the round of 16 women's national uh, collegiate soccer championship match Stanford and Notre Dame last night the Irish women prevailing one nothing lose math that's I think oh. unbelievable well that's soccer women's soccer in this nation yep best in the world probably is there's the freshman Will Green and here is a prime talent he was a number one pick every school in the country we wanted this 220 pound freshman from Atlantic City New Jersey he's been injured has only 157 yards rushing but at 6'1 and 220 with his speed and power he's going to be something first down and one of the reasons Tom O'Brien I think is so uh, sanguine and optimistic about the future of this Eagle program 37 yard line and so that inside to Washington and he meets a stiff resistance hammered by Sanders uh, Johnny Sanders the leading tackler for the Irish this year with 76 tackles in the thick of that one uh, you know, Notre Dame tacklers uh, you know a lot of tackles by the defensive backs uh, Johnny Sanders is leading tackles as you just, just mentioned and you know it's good news and the bad news L look at the one just one linebacker here, but everybody else is a defensive back. You know, the defensive line has just not made enough tackles for the Irish. Sanders sights in. He crowds from his safety spot. Second down and eight for the Eagles. Hasselbeck throws complete. And to the 28-yard line, Dewan Daniels. Devron Harper makes the tackle. Royce Daniels, quite a story. He's from Indianapolis. He went to the Notre Dame uh, football camp. He thought he would be recruited here. They had two positions with six running backs. And, of course, Daniels, uh, the optimism of youth, thought he'd be the pick. Was not. So he's migrated to Boston College, where he seems very happy. And he has produced. He's a first play, big play kind of guy. Yeah, you're right. And he started the year as a corner. First two games, he was a starting cornerback. Now he's been a dynamic wide receiver for the Eagles. Third down and two. And uh, 
The give is to Will Green, the freshman. He was stopped short, but uh, was able to plow for an extra yard. Harper, Cooper, and others on the tackle. Let's see where the mark is. I, I think he got a, the mark that I saw. Uh, I tell you, that, that's det determined running. It, it, to me, it's unusual to have a freshman as your featured short yardage goal line guy. I mean, you worry about fumbles and situations down by goal lines and critical parts of the game. Just shows you how much kind of confidence they had in Will Green. Boy, good block again by uh, number 50, Paul LaCare. Had a great game last week against uh, West Virginia. Next was the first to make contact, and Green able to nudge him back, but did not get the first down. So on fourth and short. There you go for it. Tom O'Brien will, go, will go, for go for it, trailing 14 nothing with a minute left here in the opening quarter. It would be about a 45-yard field goal. John Maddich, who was Otto Maddich, uh, has not been this year, 8 for 16. Well, you know, Hasselbeck has run some quarterback sneaks for uh, touchdowns and first downs this year. Powerful guy. This Notre Dame crowd is into this. I think the Irish fans, as well as this team, realizes the importance of getting off 5-5 five and five back to a winning record. There's Hasselbeck. And behind that big line, battling forward, and finally the whistle sounds. And uh, the spot is at the 27-yard line. It's going to be close. You know, we're talking to coaches about Tim Hasselbeck this week, and uh, you know Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, Tom O'Brien, the head coach. You know this guy is a winner. Uh, you know defines a way to make plays, and sometimes that's uh, coach speak for a not ta another terribly talented guy. There's Dana Bible, appropriate name when you come to Notre Dame, isn't it? <laughs> or Boston College. <laughs> yes, that's true. But you know it, it, they said that this guy it, it has some talent. You know it, it is really really tough. As we mentioned, he played special teams as a redshirt freshman. Heck, he grew up with two uh, two brothers roughhousing down in their basement as well. Just enough for the first down. So the Eagles drive still alive at 14 nothing. A first down at the Irish 27. Timothy Thomas Hasselbeck. <laughs> His brother, as we mentioned, already playing with the Green Bay Packers, and his younger brother, Nathaniel is an outstanding high school wide receiver has already committed to Boston College so he'll uh, have the opportunity to hook up with his brother passing combinations a year from now. Ryan Birch the fullback the fake is to the tailback Washington Hesselbeck has the man open it's a tight end Brian Art and Art is in the end zone Boston College scores Hesselbeck to Art. play call and Art was on that one. I mean a crossing route to the tight end his 19th catch of the year the third leading receiver. I mean these tight ends Boston College uses all three of their tight ends matched up against Rocky Boyman number 30. Boyman's a better pass rusher than he is a coverage linebacker and he doesn't get to him to Art is already in the end zone. Now the try for point by Maddich. Hasselbeck holds. And the kick is good, and the Boston College Eagles with just a half minute remaining in this opening quarter are back in the game at 14 to 7. And Brian Art, we talked about the tradition. Boston College, uh, the great tight ends, uh, Mark Chamura and Pete Mitchell come to mind. And this young guy, Art, a senior from Pittsburgh, Central Catholic High School, has his third score of the season. You know, really good call by Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator. This wide receiver is going to clear it out, but the tight end is going to sneak over. You see, the wide receiver kind of takes a bunch of traffic with him. See, everybody's following him. Here's, here he comes, and he gets lost in there, and then Rocky Boyman, who's, as we said, really a pass rusher, ends up covering him. So well-designed pass play. Hasselbeck, uh, he, he was the number one receiver the whole way, and that, that was designed to go to Brian Arn. It's Hasselbeck's eighth touchdown throw of the season. 14-7 now Notre Dame, and there's a big Brian Arndt, a 255-pounder from Pittsburgh. You know, it, it strikes me these two teams are similar in the, in the fact that they're really determined teams. And you know, Notre Dame, even though at 5-5, five and five, they've won some games at the end. They've also lost some games at the end, but they never seem to quit. Boston College really has played hard in the fourth quarter of ball games and won a lot of games late in the ball game. 27 yards on the touchdown, and it was a drive of uh, 53 yards in eight plays for the Eagles. 
David Gibbons and Julius Jones deep now for Notre Dame. And the kickoff by Mike Sutton. Here comes Jones, and he's hit and fumbles. And Notre Dame and the Eagles battle. Boston College had it. It appeared to squirt loose, and the Irish recover. Oh, that's a big break for Notre Dame. It was there waiting for about three white shirts. You can't say luck to the Irish, because both of these teams have a lot of Irishmen on right? But, but again, they've struggled in the turnover game. Julius Jones has, keeps that ball in the right hand all the time, even when he's going to his left. I think it's Ordway, number 28, who caused the fumble, a hustling Ordway. Free ball there. And Tom Lipinski yep. able to pull it in for Notre Dame. Remember we were watching tape yesterday? Yeah, here, here you talk about head on. Ordway is everywhere. <laughs> Fastest guy in the team, Jonathan Ordway. Arnez Battle is in a quarterback for Notre Dame, and he keeps and is tackled at the 28-yard line by Scott Bradley. Now, Arnez Battle, who is the heir apparent to Jarius Jackson, his sophomore from Shreveport, they want to give Battle some duty. No pun intended, Battle duty, but uh, he, uh, he is the future, and they've got to give him game experience. Well, quite a... First quarter here at Notre Dame. The Irish score two long drives. Boston College has answered. It's 14-7. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Well, the Irish offensive line has really battled with a bunch of injuries. Three new starters. One of them, Kurt Bowler's number 75, injured on this play. And you're going to see why. He just gets kind of hammered on the backside of his left knee. A little closer look at the end of the, uh, end of the play. It's an ouch. What's the report, Jim Gray? Well, Dick, he sprained his right knee. They took the brace off. Dr. Will Yergler looked at it, says it's a mild sprain. He's trying to walk it off down here, and they expect that he will return during this series. Dick? All right, thanks, Jim. Casey Robin, uh, number 62, replaces him. Robin's a junior from Covington, Louisiana. Hard to miss in uh, public. He's only 6'7 and 317. You know, we talked to the coaches, and they went through about four or five offensive tackles yesterday. They did not mention Casey to us. Arnez battle with the keeper and then the late toss. And it's Tony Fisher knocked out of bounds on the far sidelines. We'll see where the officials mark it. At the 34-yard uh, line, where it'll be third down and a long yard. And Ballers comes back in and Casey Robin doing uh, his thing. Just one in for one play, did a nice job. Ran the option to his play. Arnez battle you by design. He was supposed to play some of the uh, second order today. As with a backup quarterback for BC. Coach is raving about how well Battle has been practicing. I just feel that this uh, can transfer itself to game duty. He's going to be something special. Third and one. Oh, tackled in the backfield is knifing through to make the play was Antonio Gray, the sophomore from Huawei, New Jersey. See how good Antonio Gray is. You know, ordinarily Chris Holman plays tackle, but Gray has played so well they moved to Holman to end. They let Gray play because he makes a lot of quick penetration in here. And he just kind of blows right through John Morandi, the center. And that was a critical play on third and one. Forces a punt. Joey Hildbold, the first Notre Dame punt, and he just does get it away. And it's Green, the freshman, to the 40 to 42 yard line where Joey Goodspeed makes the tackle for Notre Dame. With all the entries, a lot of starters are on special teams for the Irish today. 14 7, the Irish. And welcome back to Notre Dame. Uh, Tim Hasselbeck, as is the usual plan for Boston College. Uh, will rest in the second quarter. Brian St. Pierre, the Richard freshman quarterback, number two, gets a chance to uh, see game duty. And it's Anthony Weaver tracking him and making the tackle along with Lamont Bryant at the 42-yard uh, line, a gain of maybe a yard. Well, you think a guy named uh, St. Pierre might play well at uh, in South Bend, perhaps? But, you know, real strong live arm by Brian St. Pierre. And, and I think this is, a, you know, uh, if you're starting quarterback, you hate this. But if you're head coach, you know, it, it's good planning for, for the future. You know, so many quarterbacks go down with injuries. And as a matter of fact, Brian had a start to Pittsburgh game. He went out with an injury. Hasselbeck had to come back in, even though he had a bum shoulder. And uh, he led Boston College to a tough 2016 win over the Panthers. 
The throw complete. And it's uh, Carlton Rowe now a tailback and Rowe out to the 47 48 yard line short of a first down Cooper and Jefferson make the tackle Jim. Well Dick Greg Madison the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame was not happy with his unit when they came off the field after the art touchdown from Hasselback. He got after me said he felt that they gave up on that play. He said guys we have to have more spirit. I want you guys sprinting in and out of the huddle as you see the guys coming in now and I want a full and much better effort Dick. All right, Jim, thanks. Greg Madison, uh, not only a top defensive coordinator, but regarded as one of the very best recruiters in all of college football. Third and four. Oh, what a hit from Ronnie Nix, who shot through and made the tackle. St. Pierre had no chance. You know, it was one thing to blitz or call the blitz. It's the other thing to really have it perfectly timed. Here he comes right there. Nix, absolutely perfectly timed. Yep, okay, there it's cleared. It's one thing to call, you study the snap count, you get off of the right snap count. He even ran by the up back before he had a chance to react. Here's McMyler's punt. Beautiful kick, his best of this first half. And Julius Jones back pedals and the fair catch will mark it at the 14. Notre Dame will put it in play there. 12 minutes remain in the opening half. It's 14-7. Down the Irish at the 14. Leading 14 to 7. It's Fisher. No, it's Julius Jones who gets the call on first down, and he's out to the 18. Very close to breaking that one. Scott Bradley down around the ankles, making the tackle. Well, what a family. And we talked about Julius Jones, his brother Thomas Jones at the University of Virginia, neat leading the uh, nation in rushing with uh, over 1,700 yards. You know, Julius Jones had his biggest day against uh, Navy a couple of weeks ago and said after the game, you know, they rushed for 146 yards. Really disappointed my parents weren't here, but they were watching my brother play against Florida State. Second down, it's closer to six. Darius Jackson threw the hands of Getherall. You won't see uh, Joey Joey yeah. the jockey, as they call him here, Joey Getherall, drop many at all. Uh, a reminder to check out Notre Dame's official athletic department website, und.com, for live in-game statistics. As uh, you see the miss again, transcripts of Bob Davey press conferences and all the inside information on football and the other Irish sports can be found at und.com. Third down, a long five. Tony Fisher. He's out to the right, along with the Jabari Holloway and two wide receivers, Getherall and Brown to the left. Darius Jackson steps away from pressure, but there's the second wave and the sack at the 15-yard line. Chris Hovan gets his first of today, his 10th of the season. He has 15 tackles for loss on the year as well. Five forced fumbles and a block kick, one of the 12 semifinalists for the prestigious Lombardi Award. You, you know, you talk about that bull rush. You know, you don't use him quick fish. You just shook him power. That is what Chris Hovan used right there on Ryan Scarola. Now the punt does freshman Joey Hill bold. Third catch by Green at the Irish. No, make that uh, DeWalt. Makes the fair cash, and Boston College is at the Irish 49 when we come back. Welcome back. Another big play from Chris Hovan, the 290-pounder. Cinch to be all Big East for three consecutive years. He writes a, a, something on his uh, wrist for every game to inspire him. I guarantee a victory. Apparently, uh, the... He thought uh, Coach Bob Davey said that last night at the pep rally. Unfortunately, he misspelled Coach Davey's name there. But uh, Don't think that will... Uh, <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> no, not a bit. As Washington rambles for nine on first down, Tim Hasselbeck with a handoff as he returns at quarterback for Boston College. Deke Cooper makes the tackle, and Boston College, after the Notre Dame opening surge, 14-0 early, have a touchdown to cut the lead in half and have moved to the Irish 41, second and two. Yeah, that was an eight-yard game because it was uh, about a six-yard block by the offensive line, and then Cedric Washington got the rest on it by himself. Cedric Washington, the lone tailback, two tight ends. Washington outside. That's the first down and more to the 35-yard line. Pushed out by Clifford Jefferson. 
Well, you just power football. The last three series, Boston College has just come out with two tight ends, one back, and they just try to power the football. And then some play action passes, just what they did last week against uh, West Virginia. And Cedric Washington goes over 1,000 yards. He said that was one of his goals. And uh, as he started the season, uh, replacing Mike Cloud, who was his mentor and supporter, and still makes contact with Cloud now in the NFL for the Steelers. Protection underneath he goes to the tight end and it's Brian Art the touchdown maker who has uh, a first down it would appear inside the 25 Weaver and Knicks make the tackle. Boston College just such a good job of, of, of using their tight end. It's a 20th catch this year by Art. He said the second. Uh, One of the great rivalries there Central Michigan Ball State going at it today. What was your little alma mater doing? 27 21 Ooh. fourth quarter. First down, Washington. Ooh, what a hit. As D. Cooper, Jonathan Delvecchio Cooper, thank you, the lone uh, product of the Hoosier State to be on this Notre Dame roster. He's from Evansville. You know, he, he was the guy that made that stop on fourth down a year ago up in Chestnut Hill. Kind of fills the hole like a linebacker. I mean, when he hits you, you generally go down. 220 pounds. And talked to him yesterday. Says, as you mentioned, Dick, I really want to go to graduate school. Would you let my father know he's going to have to pay tuition for a change? Another thirty thousand dollars. Oh no, that's <laughs> right. The change that's been paid for. Hasselback going toward the end zone. One handed catch. A touchdown for Jamal Burke. A flag is down. What a great <laughs> It's a 22-yard touchdown if. I think it's pass interference on Clifford Jefferson they're going to call. But in the Bible, the offensive coordinator said for two weeks, people have picked on Clifford Jefferson, and we're going to go after him. Pass interference against the defense. Penalty is declined. Pass interference is declined. Burke, the redshirt freshman from Brockton, Massachusetts. He had one hand being held, so he just used the other for a sensational score. Yeah, you know, really a, a terrific throw, too. He, he was, his left hand was held by uh, Clifford Jefferson. He's been playing corner like Thomas Jefferson sometimes this year. Really went after him. So managed with the extra point, try to tie the game. Hesselbeck's home. And we have a new game with nine minutes and a second left in the second quarter. Boston College rallies on a couple of touchdown throws from Tim Hesselbeck. But this one, brilliant play by freshman Jamal Burke. It's tied at 14. Well, that's Jamal Burke, and uh, he deserves a rest after a remarkable one-handed catch against Clifford Jefferson. First, you know, a drill shot by Tim Hasselback. The, the, the play required a drill shot. The offensive uh, game plan was to work on Clifford Jefferson, but you don't, uh, you know, game it out where you have to catch him with one hand. And then uh, the emotion of Tim Hasselbeck, an emotional guy, a, a fiery leader, a guy that always seems to find a way to win in his coach's uh, words. You know, wasn't di wasn't discouraged when he was down by 14, was he, Dick? That's a uh, terrific comeback for Tom O'Brien's team. And it tells a story about O'Brien at Boston College comeback. As 14-0 uh, did not discourage uh, this uh, eager Boston College uh, football team and the kickoff into the end zone and Julius Jones will uh, take the touchback at the 20-yard line. As you see, Jamal Burke, he wears a, kind of a tight end number 84 these days, but he's a wide receiver. His nickname in high school was Leapfrog mm. for his uh, vertical uh, power, a 38-inch vertical. And uh, as just a freshman, he gives uh, Tom O'Brien a receiver that is uh, not only athletic but a big man, a big yeah. target. You can see he's got great hands. Yeah, what Dana Bible said, said to us this week said, you know, the, the light has finally gone on for Jamal Burke. He's really come alive. Some big catches last week against West Virginia. And now the Irish, their lead of 14 nothing, has disappeared. And the give to Fisher, no gain on first down. So the Irish last three possessions, two plays and interception, three plays, punt, three plays, and out again. So after a great opening drive and a drive to follow the, for a touchdown of 63 yards, uh, they have been quiet.
Bob Davey uh, struggling through a very difficult season and of course at Notre Dame when you're five and five uh, the critics voices uh, louder and louder. Fake. Darius Jackson has his tight end Holloway Jabari Holloway to the 45 yard line in the first down. George White got him out of bounds a 25 yard play Holloway's first catch today is 10th of the season. Well, so just surprising the Irish have not been able to get the ball more to the Jabari Holloway came in as a preseason All-American candidate really a, you know a very good receiver big target but he has not caught many balls is only his 10th catch on the season for Holloway. <laughs> Uh, some of these poses are interesting. Uh, he's a uh, junior from Riverdale, Georgia. Looking down on the world. Did he catch it or was it one hopper? No good. Bobby Brown trying to scoop it, but it uh, was a one hop. Well, I like Jabari Holloway. When we were talking earlier this uh, year. He said, you know, I'm a management uh, information systems major, computer engineering major, and uh, want to start a software company, uh, sell it to Bill Gates, and then retire. <laughs> That's uh, what he wants to do post uh, you, Notre Dame. The demands here that he's in two uh, laboratory yeah. classes that deny him Tuesday and Thursday. Doesn't get to practice till 530. Yeah. And perhaps that's taken some of his game away, but that uh, comes first here. That's uh, refreshing news. Chris Jackson almost intercepted and very close on the ricochet as Frank Chamberlain knocked it down and Kevin Crane a defensive tackle down on the ground almost had it knocked into his left. I'm not sure to whom Jerry was throwing that ball but there were not a lot of blue jerseys out in the pass route but Frank Chamberlain is in number 44 right here. I watch 94 in front of him almost Man. an interception for the tackle. Well. If Chamberlain didn't get it, I think Ramon Johnson, number six, was going to intercept the ball. So it's third down and ten for the Irish at the midpoint of this second quarter. They go with three wide receivers. Here comes the blitz from Bradley. Picked up. Good throw, and it's complete to Gibbons. David Gibbons, his first catch today after going without a touchdown for almost two full seasons. This talented sophomore from Humble, Texas, in the last couple of games has thrown for a touchdown. He's run for a touchdown, and he's caught a touchdown pass. You know, nice, nice hands actually there by Jerry's Jess. A lot of the snaps I've noticed this year seem to come out to his, you know, right. He has to catch a lot of them with just the one hand. Hunt hangs in the pocket pretty good, just drills the ball right in the middle of that six of Givens. That's right out of the textbook. That's well. First down at the Boston College 40. Fisher and a thread his way gets three to the 37 yard line. Jerome Ledbetter. They like this freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey. Big room. Uh, they feel at 6'3", 220 is going to be a big time linebacker. He forced three fumbles in one game. Their opening game against Baylor has been injured a lot of the year, but you know, really one of those guys that uh, Tom O'Brien's really going to upgrade the talent level with his team. Guys like Ledbetter and you mentioned uh, William Green earlier. Javon Hunter in the slot. Tony Fisher slid out. And then the throw incomplete through the hands of Gibbons over the middle. Uh, Chamberlain was there along with Bradley for Boston College. David Gibbons has had a pretty good two weeks for the Irish. They, they have lost games, but he's had a rushing touchdown, the very first rushing touchdown against the University of Tennessee this year, had a receiving touchdown, and threw a touchdown. And uh, even though he plays wide receivers for the Irish, you know, Dick, I got the sense when we talked to him yesterday that he really still views himself as a tailback. Quite a family, too, he told us. An older brother, 23, and a younger brother, three years of age. Mm -hmm. Same parents. Uh, and, uh, he's the middle of five. Just outside of Houston. Boy, another drill, but knocked away from Bobby Brown. Still looking for his first catch. Is Jonathan Ordway <laughs> able to get a hand in there? I, you, I, I like this Jonathan Ordway. And I watched him play last week against West Virginia, and you could just tell that the game is important to Jonathan Ordway. I mean, he flies all over the place. That, that's good makeup. I mean, he was open. I mean, Jerry Jackson saw him open, but good uh, recovery speed by Jonathan Ordway. So Hildbold comes in to punt for Notre Dame. 
And DeWalt back to return at the 10 yard line. Very high. DeWalt lets it go. And did the Irish that grounded the ball keep his feet out of the end zone? Apparently he did. 35 yard punt. As number 28 downfield for the Irish, Donald Dykes able to ground it. And Boston College starts at the one yard line when we return. Okay, was he on the line? If any part of his body touches the line, he's in the end zone. Now his there. knee is on the line there. So he's in the end zone, but he does not have possession of it there, Dick. Jerome Sapp comes yeah. in to cover. Watch another, another angle. He's on, on the line. Oh, the fact he bobbles, it's yeah. a break. That's a great call by the official because it certainly appeared that he was in the end zone when he touched the ball, but his knee hit after he'd lost the yeah. ball, so it stays out at the one. Yeah, now he's in the field of play. <laughs> it's easy to criticize officials. That was a very difficult call. As the Irish defenders ask for the crowd to help as Hesselbeck sets up at the one-yard line. And he's going to go throw. He's got his man. It's the tight end, Robert Ellis, and he has a first down out across the 15 to the 18-yard line. What a great play, great call, and then great execution by Hasselbeck to Robert Ellis. I mean, I think everybody in the house is thinking, hey, we got a great offensive line. Let's pound it out at the Irish. Here he is down here. Play action fake. Good block there, too, by Washington. And, you know, that, that terrific call, but that's only half of it. Then, then you have to execute it. Good play action fake. Cedric Washington after fake made a key block. And then Robert Ellis bobbles it, but then secures it for a first. Right at target, 6'4", 261. Ellis from Baytown, Texas. First down on the 17-yard play. Hasselbeck now with a scramble. Fires back over the middle complete to Crittenden. And Derek Crittenden is out across the 40-yard line. And another Boston College first down. And the Eagles on the move again. 23 more yards. 14-14, a little under six minutes in the first half. And I'll tell you, this, this drive looks a little bit like the opening drive of the Irish. A lot of explosive plays. Crittenden, but really he kind of drives his guy up, then finds an area. His quarterback is scrambling around, just finds that soft spot in between linebackers and safeties. Drill shot by Hasselbeck again, and David Bible has got an offensive uh, game plan that's working this far. 11 for 14 for Hasselbeck. Two touchdowns. He's had quite a first half. Hands off this time to Washington. And uh, struggles out to the 45-yard line, a pickup of almost four before Johnny Sanders makes yet another tackle for Notre Dame. One of the things about this Boston College offensive line, Dick, that I, that I like so much, and Paul LeCare, number 50 there, just showed it again. Uh, you know, they can really kind of drive block it, but the, the, all these guys are nimble enough to move around and pull and, you know, come down and block linebackers and safeties. And LeCare has had a really strong season for the Eagles. Nimble, uh, he is as the lightest lineman at 291. They average well over 300 on that front wall. Second down of long six, Hasselbeck. Wide open field ahead, so he tucks it away and slides with a first down inside the Irish 35 yard line. Don Hasselbeck, nine years in the NFL, the six foot eight inch tight end with New England and others. Couldn't be prouder. Mm. You got to be proud of all three of the sons, all of whom were good guys and, and very good athletes. Again, you could just say, you know, he just makes things happen. He knows how to win. He's tough. And he got everything out of that scramble that he possibly could have. 21 yards scramble by Hasselbeck and Boston College turning this game around after trailing 14 nothing early. It's Cedric Washington a couple of yards into the arms of Anthony Denman. Remember this drive started at the one yard line. Hasselbeck uh, who was the tight end with Russ Francis and there's uh, Matt Hasselbeck now with the Green Bay Packers and young Tim who wore number two as yep. a freshman but when his brother left for the pros and he uh, accepted that number seven jersey after John Elway as dad wore in seven. Nathaniel, his other son, played a, a game yesterday back home, Boston. Wide receiver, or he'd be here as well. Donald Dykes and Ron Israel in for uh, Notre Dame, six defensive backs. So, Hasselbeck, the quarterback draw, 
to the 25 yard line. He's just shy of a first down, it would appear. Hey, this guy played with some, uh, Don Hasselbeck played with some pretty good tight ends. I guess you might call him a little unlucky, Dick. He <laughs> went to some teams. He started out with New England. Well, Russ Francis was there. Then he happened to go to the Raiders. Well, Todd Christensen was there. <laughs> then on to Minnesota. Well, Steve Jordan. But then he finally gets a chance, goes to the Giants. The Giants. They only have a rookie there. Yeah, well, they drafted him, Mark Bavaro. Yeah, but he did win a, a Super Bowl with the, with the uh, Raiders. Raiders of 83 yeah. when they beat the Redskins. And now, uh, even more exciting times with two sons, one of with Green Bay and the other quarterback here at Boston College, Hasselbeck, has a man open for a touchdown, and DeWolf can't pull it in. It may have been deflected at the last moment as Clifford Jefferson and Dee Cooper diving at the goal line. You know, great call on third and one, but a little too soft and maybe a little too late. I mean, sometimes you have a wide receiver open, you try to throw it so easily in there. You know, that was not tipped, but he was open early, a ball thrown a little bit late by Hasselbeck. Right through the hands of Dedrick DeWalt. And on fourth down and less than a yard, they go for it. There's some confidence shown by Tom O'Brien to go for the touch on third and one. Figuring he won't be stopped, and it's Hasselbeck, the quarterback off his own right guard behind uh, Paul Zakakis, the 318-pound junior, and Darnell Alford to tackle at 340. I, I guess when you need an inch, you run off of Zukakis and Alfred. You know, you talked about Tom O'Brien a little earlier, kind of turning that program around. He inherited a mess three years ago and really has gotten them on track. Not only players that have been uh, caught gambling, but they didn't know quite. Some players didn't tell the truth. Some did, didn't. Some got kicked off. Yeah. Some stayed. Some didn't want to stay just to keep the freshmen there. Yeah, a lot of cool. them wanted to leave, including Washington. It was fake two here, and now Hasselbeck tipped in the air. Batted around and caught by Boston College. Right off the lineman. It was knocked around, and one of the big old plays up front came downfield and caught the ball, and that's a legal catch. It was in play. Yeah, because Brian Art, I think, it was Zakowskis, number 66, his first reception of the year, by the way, Dick. <laughs> but Brian Art, I think the tight end, who caught a touchdown a little bit earlier, does a great job of, he sees the ball tipped, He's just trying, he, he turns into defender. And then Zukakis, he, he practices the tip drill each week, does <laughs> Zukakis. Hey, move from offensive tackle to guard. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> next year, this junior may be a wide receiver. I like that one. Now, Washington as Boston College driving deeper into Notre Dame territory. Now to the eight yard line with two minutes left in the half. Trailing 14 nothing early. Tim Hasselbeck has uh, led this Boston College team uh, right back into it, and now they threaten to take the lead for the first time. Tim Hasselbeck has had a very solid first half, as has Brian Arndt. And that, that may have been the play of the game, because that ball would, not, would have been intercepted if Arndt doesn't hustle over there and tip it away. Daniels, the only wide receiver, hurts the fullback, and Washington at tailback fake. Hasselbeck, knocked down. Number 77, Brad Williams able to get a hand on it. And that was a big play for the senior from Orange, California, Williams, because it appeared there was a BC receiver open in the end zone. That, that's uh, Brad Williams. You know, you keep fight, you keep playing, sometimes good things happen. You're, you're right, Daniels was open on about the three-yard line. A third down and seven, six defensive backs for Notre Dame. And, and if you're Tim Hasselbeck, you just have to be careful on this situation, Dick, of trying, you know, you make sure you don't squeeze it in too tight. The guy's open to drill it, but you're in field goal range, and it's a tie ball game. From the eight-yard line. Quarterback draw. To the five. Well done by the Notre Dame defense. When they first took off, it looked as if it had a chance. But Ron Israel, an extra defensive back inserted by Bob Davey, able to make the tackle. And the Irish trying to use one of the timeouts with 120 left in the half. And Tom O'Brien sends in his field goal team. We'll come back, see if the Eagles take the lead. Look at Tim Hasselbeck, also the holder on extra points and field goals as he kneels for a 22-yard attempt by John Maddich. Never alert for a fake with uh, the quarterback as the holder. It's just a short punch shot for Maddich to give BC its first lead. And the Eagles are in front 
17-14 to the delight of a couple of thousand in that end zone high. Well, Tom O'Brien's team has shown us some character today. The way Notre Dame started, one was thinking, wow, this could be a route. 14-0, two quick drives as the Irish seemed unstoppable. But O'Brien and his coaches have put the game plan back together and led by Tim Hasselbeck. It's a 17-14 Eagle lead, and uh, there's no one here in this stadium that's any happier at the moment than Papa Don. He's with Jim Gray. Well, you're exactly right, Dick. Don, it's an interesting situation how you acquired your tickets here today. You're over on the Notre Dame sideline. How did that manage? Well, Matthew, our older son, plays with the Green Bay Packers, so he became pretty good friends with Rick Meyer. They were together there uh, for camp. So Matthew got them from Rick, and obviously we got them, and we're sitting in Rick Meyer's seats here. What's your assessment of Tim? I, I know he has one more year. You were saying you feel he could be a very good pro player. He, um, I think he's ahead of schedule. Where I mean, I think he's ahead of where Matthew was at this point in his career. So, uh, you know, he keeps it up, keeps working hard. I think he's got great uh, pro potential. Now you played on a Super Bowl team. You won with the Raiders. You played with four teams. Seen an awful lot of football, but this you say is the most difficult for you to watch. Why this instead of Matt or, or, or Nathaniel? You no, know, it's uh, it, it's just you, when there's nothing you can do. When you watch the boys play, I mean, you know, you're with every play, especially when you get this close. You see every move, so it's hard. I would rather be playing myself. Don, good to see you. Thanks, Jim. All right, upstairs to you, Dick. All right, Jim, good touch. Donna goes to Julius Jones, just shy of the goal line, and Jones skipping his way to the 25, to the 30, and to the 34-yard line. Just a footnote on Don Hasselbeck at 6'8". He was a star at the University of Colorado, grew up in Cincinnati. And if memory serves me, I think at one time with New England, he was their emergency quarterback, so some of that throwing talent is passed <laughs> genetically. <laughs> At the 34, then the Irish with a 14 nothing lead evaporated. Now battling with 108 left in the half to regain the lead. They go with three wide receivers and Jarius Jackson in the shotgun. Scrambles, throws incomplete. Bobby Brown claims he was held by Scott Bradley, but you're allowed to check that wide receiver until the ball's released. A reminder, folks, coming up, uh, our NBC halftime report on this busy football day. Hannah Storm will be in our New York studios with the college football scores and highlights. A look at last night's NBA action. Also an update from the Chase Tennis Championships that uh, includes the 1999 tennis season, the top women in the world battling at the Garden. That's all coming up at halftime. Second and ten. Gatherall to the 40, a six-yard pickup. They've got two timeouts remaining, less than a minute uh, to go in this first half. The, the Irish have two timeouts. You know, they got to get the, the ball to, to Bobby Brown. He got 12 passes last week. He has not, does not have a catch yet today. Fisher out of the backfield to the left side. Three wide receivers. Burden four. Underneath, and it's Givens. Did he uh, scoop it up? Yes, yeah. Givens with a tough catch with well covered by two BC defenders. It's a first down at the 46, 34 seconds. Yeah, the clock doesn't start, the, the down markers are set. Yeah, what uh, young Sean Mahan in his first start, the sophomore from uh, James Oklahoma, has done a good job on the All America Chris Hovang. This is a Givens again. He's a Big man at 216 pounds. That number six is a little deceiving. He, he doesn't look that he has that size. He could play tailback as he did in high school. He could play defensive back. He said kind of in the back of his mind he'd, he'd like to be able to run the football a little more. Well, he is the, uh, their emergency tailback. He is also their emergency quarterback. And as you can see, he's a pretty dog, uh, good receiver. The idea is to get him a chance to run after the catch because he was that high school tailback. And strong, as you can see it, 218 pounds, can break some tackles. Big fan of, uh, of Walter Payton's. Remember, he said he still watches tapes of uh, Walter Payton, has him in his dorm room. Yeah, we, we heard that from several players, uh, including the uh, starting tailback for Boston College, uh, Cedric Washington, who said he had a chance to meet uh, Payton's son, who plays at the University of Miami, a freshman there. Changes number to 34. Well, let's change uh, directions here because here's a reminder tonight on NBC. <laughs> James Bond. NBC Tonight. James Bond. A special Saturday presentation of GoldenEye. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on NBC. I thought you had uh, copyrighted that. Lynn Swan used to call you GoldenEye, didn't you? <laughs> 
I made Lynn Swan an all American because he had to dive all over the field for my catches. <laughs> you know, you talk about one handed catches. You really stretch. Hey, you can't become an all American just catching the easy ones. It's second down and one. Notre Dame at the 45. The clock a factor. Only 18 seconds left. And Notre Dame with one timeout. The blitz is on. Jerry is able to spring free. Run, throw. It is a Gibbons at the 32 yard line. Eight seconds. They stop the clock on the first down. And there's an injured Irish player back at the 40 yard line. It's Tony Fisher. Ouch. The Irish this year just loaded at tailback at the start of the season. Tony Driver, but he's out academically. Terrence Howard out with a knee. Uh, now Tony Fisher injured, and, and Julius Jones, the freshman, who at the start of the season was the fourth tailback. Well, they had a fifth. Remember Dorsey oh, Levy left. He left, so, I mean, you're right. And again, Tony Fisher, uh, he's number 12, 12 right here. Yep. Just landing awkwardly on uh, that right knee. And he grabbed his left. I mean, it was a, it was a quick move to that left knee. Yeah, he said that, you know, you've gone through it as a collegiate player and a professional player and uh, as a broadcaster. I mean, they're, they're just, it's, it's a, the fate of football uh, just it makes it, so incredible for coaches to try to figure. I mean, how do yeah. you figure that some seasons go by, you don't lose no, a player yep. with an injury, and then there's a season like this at Notre Dame, we have 20 men out with injuries. Well, the Irish last year had very few injuries, and then this year, I mean, today's game, three brand new offensive linemen. I mean, I've never heard of that in the 11th game of the season for a team. Fisher helped off, and mm. uh, that's certainly not a pleasant sight. Boy. David Gibbons, who's that emergency tailback, may see some action in that position. So eight seconds and Jarius Jackson in that uh, down throwing it. down and yeah. get the field goal unit on. Unless uh, this is a fake. Nope. He got five. He should have gotten five yards. Five free and ones. And the flag is down. Boy, that's, that's, that's a real error by Boston College's defense. Derek Rossi, a freshman from Medford, New York, uh, took the hook. Can't believe it took five seconds, though, to get that ball snapped and, and downed. Took five seconds. There's only four seconds left in the clock. Offsides, defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. And the field goal team is going to come on, but, and again, you know, just being aware, I think, knowing circumstances of the games, the early move, the quick snap, get rid of it. And now that took five seconds. They call time, Notre Dame. Use their final timeout to get the field goal unit in place. And a chance for Jim Sanson, who has regained the place kicking duties, uh, as David Miller, the sophomore from Ranger, Indiana, has uh, a hip injury and Fisher being held back to the locker room facilities. One thing uh, Bob Davy has to be concerned about here, Dick, a little bit is, is a block field goal. Jim Sanson. Particularly from this different di distance, when he tries to hit a long one, they come out kind of low. And he's had a lot blocked, including uh, one block last week at right at the end of the half, uh, first half last week. And when you get out beyond 40, you yeah. tend to want to get more power and you keep it lower. It's a 44 yard attempt to tie out of James Caputo's hold. It's 17-17. It's up. But is it good? Yep. Sampson delivers from 44 with his longest field goal of the year. So the senior sends the Irish back to the locker room tied with Boston College. What a first half. It's 17 all. Yeah, and good for Jim Sampson. Boy, he has been through some... Uh, Ups and downs here, and this was definitely a positive. Boy, at midpoint, Whew. light. It looked as if that one was going to be wide right. Bob Davy gives the signal. It's 17-17. Jim Gray. All right, thank you, Dick, with Tom O'Brien. Tom, your team fell behind 14 to nothing. You got on track. What enabled them to settle down and take the lead until the last play of the half? Here? Well, the uh, the interception helped us. We had to make a stop in there. They came out. You know, very emotional game for Notre Dame. They came out and took a great shot at us, but our kids hung in there. I think the interception turned everything around for us. Pleased with where you're at. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, here it's tied. It's, it's even even. Now we got to play 30 minutes. Good luck in the second half, Tom. All right, back upstairs to you, Dick. I'll hey, take you directly to Hannah Storm, our New York studios. It's the NBC Halftime Report. And welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. The lights are on on this gray late Saturday afternoon. The Boston College Eagles and Notre Dame Fighting Irish. They've been lighting it up a very long offensive minded first half at 17 17 and quite a comeback for BC. Yeah, you know, I think it was the interception that really kind of turned around. Remember, Notre Dame was up 14 nothing and kind of driving in the tip ball, the interception, they kind of turned the momentum around. But I think Boston College has been a determined team all year long and uh, they tied it up right before halftime. And a look at the halftime statistics and the yards uh, very close total yards of the two teams uh, the one turnover that you mentioned uh, key to the comeback for Boston College and I thought the quarterback comparison was interesting as well. Yeah you know Tim Hasselbeck throwing for two touchdowns uh, you know really a very very efficient first half uh, Jarius Jackson again I think straight really have to carry too much of the too much of the load Tony Fisher's injury I think is a key one for the Irish too. And we'll find out how serious that is when we return and see who will replace him. It's 17 all ready for the second half. We'll be right back. Jim Gray back at Notre Dame with head coach Bob Davey. Bob, the condition of Tony Fisher is what? I'm not sure right now. I'm going to have to check with the trainers. We did a lot of adjusting in there. I'm going to have to check with the trainers and find out. But I think he's going to play in the second half. I think he's okay. If he can't go, who backs up Jones? Julius Jones is a tailback, and we're down to David Givens. would have to be the next one. But I think Tony Fisher is going to be okay. All right, Bob, good luck in the second half. Back upstairs to you, Dick. All right, Jim. And then watching uh, the Irish warm up, Tony Fisher was running at full speed and appears uh, that knee injury is not serious. You can see the frantic nature of halftime for coaches. They have oh, players boy. everywhere. They're trying to get the defense organized, the offense organized, give them the emotional charge to start a second half. You don't have all sources of information uh, at the ready switch, do you? So deferring on uh, the toss at the start of the game, Notre Dame will get the kickoff to open this second half 17 17 and Mike Sutton uh, Jr. from Ellicott City Maryland kicks it off really high good speed and good speed the fullback just uh, catches it like a pop fly the second baseman and takes it out of bounds <laughs> and it's first down for the Irish and Jarius Jackson Jackson who started the game with that 45 yard pass. It's interesting that both teams in the first half had a 94 yard drive. The Irish for that opening touchdown and Boston College 94 yards has stalled at the five and kicked the field goal. After a brilliant start the Notre Dame offense slowed down and uh, did manage the field goal at the very end of the half to tie the score. Fisher does start the second half and he is healthy. Some of the tacklers aren't <laughs> as he picks up 12. Right over Pedro Serino, the free safety. And, you know, you, you talk about the, you know, the punishment guys take, particularly the running backs. I mean, they're always going to get pounded. But uh, and, and then you have an opening hole for a little while, you break through some tackles, then there's one guy left. And then you just have to run over him. And that's exactly what Tony Fisher did there to Serino, the free safety. And Serino, an all Big East safety at uh, 200 pounds. First down at the 40, and it's Fisher again. And uh, like a fresh horse in uh, Fisher, nine more yards to the 49. And again, Serino, the tackler. Where's number three? Because uh, Serino's kid brother, Eric, number. Uh, his favorite number is three. Nine-year-old Eric watching, cheering for his uh, brother. Here he comes, number three, to make that tackle. He said, uh, nice to hear a young college guy say, I just love my little brother to death. He said, I, I know he'll be watching me. <laughs> Second down and one. It's Gibbons in motion. Fisher. The workhorse who didn't know if he's even going to play the rest of the game and he comes out and uh, takes his team all the way now to the BC 46 yard line. Hey, Dick, it, there's been one surprise to me this game with the game tied 17 17 is how well Notre Dame's offensive line has played. Dick in that first half I mean three new starters in there Scarola Mahan and Bowlers Mahan matched up against Chris Hovan most of the day they did a very good job. Mayhem giving away about 15 pounds to the All-America candidate Hovind. There's 
Fisher trying to get outside and is tackled at the 46 for no gain. What a hustling play by Chris Holvin. Remember Tom O'Brien said this guy gives you everything you have. He has on every single play. And at that time, they tried. That's not bad mascara job. He does that on purpose. But they try to option him this time. You're going to option a, a good pass rusher, a good player, number 95. Plays down the line. Uh, that's Tony Fisheries chasing. Look at me, awesome. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, you know, good things happen to your team when guys like that, the leaders on your team, hustle. Well, Van, I like the coaches' uh, technology, the terminology they call it, uh, great motor. There's the throw to Brown, and Brown has his initial catch of the day and doesn't want to go down. It takes half the defense to finally corral him at the 35-yard line. That'll be a Notre Dame first down. You know, he was the guy that set up that touchdown with the block, remember, early in the, uh, in the first quarter, Dick? Uh, uh, Bobby Brown, one of the leaders of this team, had a magnificent game last week as a receiver. Really just used as a blocker. Now he catches a lot of hook routes. And the thing is, if you can get turned right after the catch, you have a chance to make some guys miss, as Bobby Brown did there. Future four order. misses. Four misses before Serino finally able to wrap him up with some help. First down at the 35, Julius Jones. Into the back of his own blockers and uh, repelled then by the BC defense and number 44, Frank Chamberlain, along with Chris Hovan. Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator, said this this week about Frank Chamberlain. He said, you know, if, if, if Frank Chamberlain doesn't play well for us, we can't win. You know, Frank Chamberlain generally plays pretty well for Boston College. He's been their biggest surprise this year. Dad owns a Subway sandwich shop in uh, Malway, New Jersey. So you've got to try that Italian combo. I have. Yeah. Second down eight. Quick toss and Julius Jones no handle. Whoa, Riskley, he picks it up and is tackled immediately as he does. His number 88, Adam Newman from defensive end, able to bring him down. And that was a gamble by Jones rather than falling on the ball, trying to pick it up on the run. Well, it was a good pitch. You know, nothing wrong with a pitch by Jarius Jackson. And you're right, at that point, you're probably better off just falling on it. You know, give yourself, you give your quarterback a chance to pick it up. And, Adam Newman started as a uh, tight end at Boston College, and as Tom O'Brien's had to move a lot of people around, moved into defensive end, and played pretty well in that play. There's a big loss for the Irish now, third down and 24 as they go with three wide receivers from the BC 49. Curious Jackson going to run it. And out of bounds at the 43, Jonathan Ordway with a bump. Oh, Jonathan Ordway, he, he loves to play. He's like Rocky Point. Uh, you know, double headers, you know, playing in the parking lot, whatever. He, Jonathan Ordway would show up. Now, well, Jarius Jackson, that loss on the pitch uh, with a fumble by Julius Jones cost the Irish a budding drive, so he'll bowl to punt it. Will Green at the 10. He lets it go. And it takes a Notre Dame bounce. There's a size at the six and a half yard line. So Hillbolt's had a good day, the young punter for Notre Dame. That 37 yards without return, it's still time. Irish fans trying to wake up the echoes as BC starts from the seven. Tied at 17 here early in the third quarter. Tim Hasselbeck. And he gives to Cedric Washington and Washington out to the 10 yard line. We talked earlier about the mess that uh, Tom O'Brien inherited uh, three some years ago. And one of the men involved, Washington, said that uh, I was going to leave. It just didn't look like I wanted to play here. And my dad, Lawrence, talked me out of it. He said, you're not going to leave. You're going to fulfill your commitment. Lawrence, his dad, diabetic coma a couple of weeks ago. They were afraid uh, they would lose him. He's in Holyoke Hospital in Massachusetts. I know he's watching. Your son says he's looking forward to seeing you next week for Thanksgiving. On second down, Hasselbeck eludes the rush, then throws, complete to the tight end. And out goes Brian Arndt, who caught a touchdown in the first half and made a great defensive offensive play when he tipped a possible interception to a, a teammate. And it's a first down out of uh, really difficult territory. You're right, he's been a receiver and a defender all in one game. The fourth catch of the game for Brian Arndt. He kind of rumbles pretty good for a guy 255. 
Big target over the middle. I'll tell you, tight ends are, 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 can be a quarterback's best friend. Big targets, good hands over the middle. First down out to the 32 with some breathing room for Hasselbeck. And he's going long to Jamal Burke. And he almost made another one-handed catch, but a flag down, and it appears Clifford Jefferson will be called for interference. And he was tied up again and almost caught one-handed with a left arm this time. Yeah, same matchup. Jeff uh, Jefferson on Jamal Burke. And the same call, uh, pass interference on, on Clifford Jefferson. Pretty close coverage. Pass interference gets the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And that'll take it to the 46-yard line, D.C. territory. You know, as I, as I look, look at that, I'm not so sure that was pass interference on Clifford Jefferson. Yeah, he's got his left hand. He's got his hands turned. He's got he's got the right to the position of the ball. I don't I don't think that's pass interference on Clifford. It is now. Yeah, I, I lose that battle all the time. First down, 46 of BC. 17, 17 the score. 9:26 left in the third. Whoops. And very little there for Cedric Washington, who has passed the 1,000 yard mark in his uh, career and slow getting up. He went head first into a couple of Notre Dame tacklers. Anthony Weaver, one of them. Averaging over 100 a game, but uh, 45. Just uh, past the half of uh, this one. So as they attend to uh, the running back of the Boston College Eagles will take this break. Welcome back. Frederick Washington uh, being attended on the sidelines. Hasselbeck goes to the shotgun on second down and eight. Oops. And that'll cost him five as the tight end. Uh, Brian Arndt a bit too eager to get off the line of scrimmage. That ball, false start against the offense. Five yards, remains second down. And the market back at the 43-yard line. Tom O'Brien uh, grew up in Cincinnati. Uh, he was influenced by the great Roger Staubach, who also was a Cincinnati prep star. And so with the success of Staubach at the Naval Academy, O'Brien decided to attend there as well. Big Cincinnati Reds fan. He tells the story as a young coach at Annapolis. He'd go out at night and he could get the radio station with a clear signal and listen to the Reds and Jada Pinson and his heroes. There's that inside screen and well executed as Dedrick DeWalt, who's been quiet today, although the leading receiver on the season with 36 for the Eagles. That's his first today. Well, he sure looked like a running back after this catch. Uh, there was some quickness in DeWalt's step. He's kind of, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dick. I was just going to say, he's got friends and family here from nearby Chicago. Went to Simeon Vocational. It's like, what, that jailhouse screen that defensive coordinator Greg Madison calls. You see it a lot in college football and in pro football. Uh, turn those wide receivers into running backs. Short throw and then hope for a big game on the run. 3D, Dedrick Dean DeWalt. Makes it third down and two. Oh, good selection by Hasselbeck playing off that defensive end and picks up the first down at the 32 yard line. Now that was a quick reaction play. Yeah, you know, you, you look at him, you say, yeah, he's a little bit awkward. He's not that fast. But, you know, every, every time he runs, they seem to move the chains. And once again, number 50, Paul Le, uh, LeCare, the the uh, left guard, kind of just subtly, see, he just kind of ducks in front of his quarterback, takes out Lamont Bryant. And, uh, you know, again, one of those guys, he just knows how to win. That's what the coaches say. And a determined guy gets that clot of dirt there in his face mask. A little bigger than he looks at 6'1 and 212. Picked up 14 on the play before Ferrer could make the tackle. Looking deep. Not open. Now throws into the flat. And uh, DeWalt close to another first down. Rocky Boyman made the tackle. Let's uh, credit that catch to Derek Crittenden. You know, really, once again, the, the, the problem Notre Dame has had most of this year, Dick, is not being able to put much pressure on quarterbacks. And Tim Hasselback in this quarter has had a lot of time, particularly that that one, to, to find receivers. I and mean, he danced around, danced around, and then finally found Crittenden on the right uh, sideline. DeJuan Daniels now in along with Jamal Burke there to the left. Second and one. 
They like to go for it uh, in this uh, second and short yardage, but if they uh, hand off instead inside and Carlton roll the back up to Cedric Washington, some high stepping moves, and Harper and Sanders finally get him down at the Irish 12-yard line. Yeah, I call them thousand-yard blockers. You can't have those thousand yard seasons without guys. Once again, 50 LaCare does a great job of getting his guy. 72 Palaza, the center hustling down. I mean, big offensive line, over 300 pounds. Look at the difference, you know. Notre Dame's defensive line only 280 compared to the 311 for BC's offensive line. 30 pounds per man. 17 17. The Eagles flapping their wings again. And here comes Hassel back to the five. And then to the two yard line. Well, you know, there's no penetration there. I mean, you, you saw that, Dick. As soon as you ran down the, the option play at the right side, no defensive penetration. That means the guys who are seal blocking on the right side, your tight ends and tackles, are doing a great job. I mean, there's nobody there. And then a good block by Dewan Daniels downfield. Yeah, he lost that ball there. He got, he got lucky it went out of bounds, but he dropped it. But really good seal blocking on the right side for Boston College. What a drive. 91 yards in eight plays. It's second down and one. Actually, that's a break. They could pick up a first down and have uh, four shots from shorter range. Will Green, the freshman, the tailback. He gets the call. Dives to the goal line, and he's close. Doesn't get the touchdown, but it'll be first and goal from inside the one-yard line. Of course, uh, as we documented earlier, last year a thriller at Chestnut Hill at Alumni Field as uh, Dee Cooper made the tackle on fourth and goal. Mike Cloud, Cloud, many uh, of the BC players and fans feel was in on third down. Yeah. And Jimmy Friday made that tackle for Notre Dame. I won't be surprised if Hasselback doesn't take it. He had two successful quarterback sneaks he's had this game. Well, they get to Green, and Green battling his way to the goal line. No signal yet. Didn't quite make it as Tario Harrison, who had a big game last week at Pittsburgh, 11 tackles, and he's playing uh, injured. The 233-pound sophomore from Sulphur Springs, Texas, spearheaded the defensive charge. Anthony Denman gives you everything he has every play. Like, like playing fullback there. Mm. He got in the way. And I, I give Hasselback a chance to drill it in himself. Football tickling the goal line on second and goal. Hasselback. Yeah, the Puritans in. He is touchdown. Boston College. Thrown for a couple, run for another, directed a very good offensive uh, game plan. Puts the Boston College up by six. And what an impressive drive just as Notre Dame opened the game with a 95-yard drive. And now Hasselbeck and the Eagles have gone long distance. In the end. Good offensive line play in that drive, too, Dick. I mean, they, you, you often forget those guys, but boy, this is a solid BC offensive line. Maddich with the extra point, and Boston College leads 24 to 17. 93 yards, 11 plays. Hasselbeck for the score. This big day of college rivalries, and this is the Catholic rivalry. Two major universities still with the football program. It uh, started back in 1975 and has featured some terrific games, including last year's and six years ago when this BC team came in and beat number one ranked Notre Dame on a last second field goal. The Eagles lead 24 17, and the kickoff into the end zone to Julius Jones going to gamble. It's a crease. And out to the 30-yard line. That was very close to going the full distance for Jones, the freshman. It, it, Julius Jones has some burst. Good, first of all, the good vision got a pick up, picked up a couple of good blocks, one by Givens. And then it's kind of a feel, then it's speed. And, you know, you see him secure the ball there because he's had some fumbling problems on kickoff returns. But secured that ball. Serino and Johnson, two starting defensive backs on special teams for BC, making the tackle at the 31. Senior John Morandi over the ball for Notre Dame. The Irish trail by seven. 
Darius Jackson off play action. Cuts it away. Diving out to the 40. A nine yard pickup. Jackson this year rushing for 417 yards starting today. The number two rusher for Notre Dame. And he looked as if he uh, injured his hand. Yeah, and you, know, you wonder why you want to play your backup quarterbacks is because these both of these starting quarterbacks run the ball a lot take some punishment and so that's why you give your backup quarterback a series in the second quarter. You know he's been battling turf toe he gets beaten up every single game. Look at he just saw his house. He doesn't take the slide and Arnaz battle in to try to pick up the uh, first down. I don't believe he made it. Next he gives it to uh, good speed. Coming back in. This is, you know, they call him the warrior. This is the reason why he's coming right back in. With Dan O'Leary as they go to two tight ends on third and one. Oh, well, Jarius Jackson. Bad hand and all. He has David Gibbons, one of the backs on the left, and uh, Tony Fisher to the right. Ovan almost offside, and Fisher struggling, and uh, that's going to be close as they ran off that left side. And uh, we'll see if this is going to uh, warrant a measurement. Yes. Ball is uh, just shy of the 41 yard line, and it was Chris Hovan burrowing in there. He's their kind of their, their tempo setter. It's usually an up tempo when he uh, sets it. Now well, they made it. They said they've been double teaming Hovan so much as coaches said he's tackled more than our tailback. Here's <laughs> Washington, yeah. Let's go to Jim. All right, Dick Jarius Jackson has a sprained left elbow, according to Will Yergler, the doctor for the Fighting Irish, and he's back in the game, but uh, keep an eye on his left elbow. Dick? All right, thanks, Jim. So first down, Jackson and the Irish at their 41, trailing 24-17. It's Fisher. Nose down for a couple. You know, Jarius forgot to put his mouthpiece in there. You know, he's always putting the mouthpiece in his, in his right there. Right there. He forgot to put it in that time. Maybe that's that left elbow that's bothered him. Normally, every play, he takes it out, sticks it there, and he generally grabs it and sticks it back in his mouth. I think he forgot where he put his mouthpiece. Who's hiding Nothing mouthpiece? escapes yes, your eye. Yeah. You know, you are. He missed it the last play. <laughs> Hawkeye, Aiden. <laughs> Second down and the long seven. Side. And a short yardage as Gibbons makes the catch or make it Rakai Nelson. Nelson who uh, made the big catch to start the game but all over him was Ramon Johnson. We talked about Ramon Johnson. The Big East teams have an, a different kind of contest. They have a, a stock challenge and uh, every school in the Big East has a five man woman team that picks stocks and then they grade uh, their selections. And Ramon Johnson and the Eagles of Boston College, they're in first place. Way out in the Big East. 30% returns and guess who's in last? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Minus seven. Well, they didn't go for those high tech stocks. Yeah. These are play dollars, by the way. Can't get it off as Bobby Brown tried to come back to help, but Chris Hovan and Antonio Garay were all over Jackson, denying the throw. Yeah, and you see the frustration in Jarius Jackson. The first time I've seen him do it, uh, you know, as off offensive lineman. Did a pretty good job on Chris Hovan, number 95. That's Mahan on him. He pushed it past Jackson, but it's Mike Gandy. His guy slips off and gives uh, Jarius Jackson some grief inside. That's a great second big play of the game. He'll bowl the punt. Ooh, he scuffs this one. You get a good bounce, no? No bounce at all. And it'll be BC with a break on that short kick to start at the 31 yard line. Only 21 yards on the punt. BC in front by seven. And welcome back to Notre Dame. The, uh, Miles indicating uh, they know Thanksgiving's coming. They're going to get a good meal soon. <laughs> All the kids. Hasselbeck a little too tall for Carlton Rowe. 
as we started uh, this telecast, we talked about the bowl implications. And at seven and two, Boston College is assured with their Big East agreement a bowl. If they win today, the Inside.com bowl in Tucson would be theirs. But should they win today and then at Virginia Tech on Friday, should they upset the unbeaten uh, Hokies, uh, they would uh, have the Gator Bowl possibly on January 1st. That's how far Tom O'Brien's yeah. taken his team. Now, if Notre Dame wins today and next week, they'll get one of those bowl bids, probably the Gator Bowl. That's a back. Incomplete. That's two passes just a little high. DeWalt was the intended receiver. So 121 remaining in the third quarter. Boston College up by a touchdown. Well, one thing I, you know, I think what Notre Dame has done a great, or uh, Boston College has done a really good job of is using that offensive line. I think you need to go back and pound it a little bit at Notre Dame where they've been successful. Now, now they find themselves on third and ten though. But on you know, the first and second down, they've had some real good success letting that dominant offensive line do their job. Jamal Burke a little confused finally gets off the field. Eight on the play clock six defensive backs staring at Hasselbeck. Good protection again. Now throws complete and Daniels is on the loose. DeJuan Daniels to the Notre Dame 27 yard line. Well, that ball was in the air an awfully long time, and Notre Dame didn't really didn't react terribly well. And a flag is down back in the backfield of Boston College. This one is going to come back. A lot of time for Hasselback and perhaps for a penalty reason. Holding, holding against the offense. Two yards in the previous spot. Repeat third down. Well, Darnell Alford, the right tackle, number 76. Over here. Yeah, he's, uh, that's not holding on him. It was somewhere else, at least early on it was. No, that's not a hold on him. He has one determined guy. All 340 pounds of him. Lamont Bryan complaining, but he had his uh, hand all over and into the mask of yeah. Alford. That, that wasn't holding on uh, Darnell. He is a large man with a large helmet. And a huge future, according to many pro scouts. Dancing bear with those feet. So now third and 20. The challenge facing Hasselbeck and the Eagles. That's the time. And he just got to take what yardage is there and out of bounds at the 27 play. Good play. Yeah, smart play. You, you know, you're up 24-17. Don't force it. You're playing good defense. I mean, that is a mature, smart play by Tim Hasselbeck. Flag is thrown on the sidelines as Hasselbeck went out of bounds, and it could be against uh, the BC players or coaches by the reaction of the official. Unsportsmanlike? No, oh, personal yep. foul against Boston College. Well, you know, that's that's a stupid penalty, okay, right? Because I think it was some guys on the sideline, not really the plane, uh, the, the players. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, 10 yards, I'm sorry, 15 yards, and such, we enter the run, fourth down. Boy, boy, just lose 15 yards in the punt. And Notre Dame should get good field position. Julius Jones drifts back and they'll put 10 men up and put the rush on Kevin McMiller, who's had two punts blocked this year. Great time to come after him. Jones standing on the 50 yard line. 38 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Austin College by 7, 24 to 17. Just picking that one up and then whips a low line drive end over end to the 45 yard line, but uh, good hands and feet from Kevin McMiller. 32 yard punt, but that could have been disastrous. You know, you know, every punter knows in this a good shortstop, really. He knows the team's going to come after you. He did the best he could and he got 32 yards out of that thing, but 
Stupid penalty on the sideline gave uh, Notre Dame 15 additional yards. It would have been on the Notre Dame 40 yard right. line instead of the Boston College 45. Well, I say this is where the Irish have been so tough this year, playing from behind late in ball games, you know, late in the third quarter here. Trailing by a touchdown. Darius Jackson on the option. And a yard is all as Chris Hovan tracking his man makes the tackle. So, you know, rare do you see you know, guys that size and built like that able to run sideline to sideline. But we've seen three or four plays where Chris Hovan has done that. One of his class of seniors that uh, haven't beaten the Irish. Haven't been to a bowl game. That uh, Pat Hayden looked too. That, oh, yeah. You know. I used to get the towels after guys like that. They would use it. I had to wipe his face off. They'd give me the towel. <laughs> Well, they only score the third quarter. The sneak by Hasselbeck that capped a 93-yard drive for Boston. As Fisher able to swing wide and bumped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Yeah, you, you see the three guys over there hustling. One was wearing a 99 or 98, 88, 85. All those defensive linemen over there on the boundary. This is a team that is determined and it's hustling. You realize, you know, beginning of the fourth quarter, leading Notre Dame at their place, up by seven. This is a huge game for the Eagles. We saw at 98, Mike Willits, fourth year playing at Boston College. He has never missed a single practice. He's been hurt, never missed a day. Together all. Number two for the MVP. Yeah. In the hand of storm, in motion. Oh, incomplete to Bobby Brown. He was open and just off his fingertips. Jarius a little unhappy with himself on that throw. Uh, a rocket. See, it's easy to find the mouthpiece when you put it there. When you put it high, it's real hard to find. You don't see it. Now, this is getting to be a impending drama. I just wonder how it's going to end. 300, yeah, it is. 300 strong, that band. He'll bowl to punt. Six punt in their last seven possessions for Notre Dame. Not a good statistic. He lifts it high. Green lets it go. It, no, it is not saved. He was on the goal line. Uh, Jerome Sapp, the freshman safety, or is he? Now look the way the official threw his bag yeah. that um, that yes. was going to be a touchback. Here's Sapp number 20. <laughs> Yeah, he's There's in no his. question yeah. about that on the goal line. Touch yep. back at the 20-yard yep. line. We also come to a close uh, of our Notre Dame season. Uh, you know, if you start thanking everyone, it'll be very difficult. Uh, from Mike Wadsworth, uh, the athletic director, John Heisler, and his great people in the sports information. And thank you. Uh, yesterday, you brought in a special, the uh, undertones uh, to serenade us. Uh, that was really terrific Yeah, I've been, been an acapella fan for a long time. They came in and serenaded our production meeting. They're pretty good, weren't they, the undertones? Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of... Uh, CDs to go home and share. Yeah. You know, that's just the beauty of being on a college campus. There's just so much happening. It's good stuff. Play action, Hasselbeck, and he goes downtown. And it is almost intercepted by Jefferson. Clifford Jefferson was there to deny Jamal Burke. And, and good for Clifford Jefferson, a guy who's been picked on for three straight weeks. You see the enthusiasm, and you know, and you need to make a play or two like that, Dick, to get your confidence. And, and what you do, sometimes you bloom. I mean, this had to be a really a huge throw to uh, Burke because he had been gone about 10 seconds, it seemed like, before Hasselbeck unleashed it. And that's one of those plays that they had uh, designed just to try to get Jefferson yep. with a fake reverse from the 22nd and 10. Hasselbeck. With the keeper has the first down as he's out of bounds at the 31 yard line. This is an efficient a quarterback job as I've, uh, as I've seen this year, Dick. You know, not necessarily sensational, but you know, he's made all the plays when he's had to make them. Team up by seven points, playing away uh, against Notre Dame. You know, the, the two Catholic school rivalry. You know, you have them on the ropes a little bit. You have to come up with a play. You don't force it, but you're you're you know nimble enough to pick up a first. Up to the 31 yard line, 14 21 remaining in the fourth quarter, and Boston College leading 24 to 17. And it's not quite apparent why this Eagles team has 
seven and two, and could in some eyes be nine and zero. Oh. And breaking free is Carlton Rowe, and Rowe shirt tailed by D. Cooper out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Okay, I, I think Boston College offensive line is really beginning to wear Notre Dame down. I mean, they've been out there a long time. There's Palazza, the center, their co-captain. I mean, these guys up front. I mean, there's 66. Right, look at the block there. That's the right guard, Paul Dukakis. And I, I tell you, you know, they, they, we said they're nimble enough to kind of pull, not just to drive blockers, they get out there and move a little bit. But Dukakis and Alford, and Palazza, McCare, Cook. 26 yards produced on the last play. Now Hassel back. Quick throw, complete to the tight end. Brian Arms and Arms, another first down and more. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line after running through a couple of tackles. It was actually, it was that fullback who oh, Ryan yeah. Birch, that's a, yeah, that is an upset. The fullback touched the ball yeah. for, mark it down. Yeah, yeah, well, that, yeah, once every lunar eclipse, they give him the ball. And, you know, he blocks, he blocks, he blocks. And he, he's right out there by the tight end. He's right in the same zone, fullback in front of the tight end. You know, they don't hand him the ball much, but that's his 10th catch of the year. That's a, a common uh, number for a fullback, 96. <laughs> you think he may have been a defensive lineman in a prior life? So another first down, and it's Green, the freshman, trapped right at the line of scrimmage. William Green on the carry. Back to Birch, he, they had him at defensive lineman as a freshman, and they finally moved him to fullback, and they just kept his old defensive uniform number, 96. Even the coaches say, you know, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> to have <laughs> yeah. our fullback wearing 96, but it's his, and he wants to yeah. keep it. Made the Bible say, gosh, I really tried to talk about it that number. Oh, the Eagles with the lead and the ball driving at the 25 of Notre Dame. Hesselbeck keeps it again, finds the crease, flag down as Hesselbeck's in the end zone. Will it count? Well, we may have a hold here. Holding Boston College, so Hesselbeck's effort for not. That's big. I would have given him a two touchdown lead at the beginning here of the fourth quarter. I don't know whether they called it on Darnell Alford, the uh, the right tackle number 76, but what they put a pretty good block on his man. Holding, kiss the offense. Ten yards assessed for a previous spot. Repeat, second now. He was a large, quick man. You're right there. There's the hold. Yep. He gets a little pull down there. That was a. But again, look, here's 50 again. That's uh, old Lacare, who's everywhere. Second and what, 20, yeah, second and 20. And that was a 25-yard touchdown nullified by the penalty. So back to the 35 on the penalty. And Hasselbeck did not deliver the toss to Green. Keeps it for a one-yard gain into the arms of Rocky Boyman. Rocky Boyman is one of those guys who, who just, you know, the game means an awful lot to him. Now, he, he's been uh, splitting the position with uh, Joe Ferrer, number 41, the last few weeks. But Rocky Boyman's had his best day, I think, as a pass rusher today. Now we're down to the point, uh, Pat Hayden, at 5-5, five and five, and the Irish trailing by a touchdown. We're going to see how much uh, fight is in the fighting Irish. Uh, this could be uh, the difference between... Uh, Comeback season or demoralized, and it may be the latter as Jamal Burke has a touchdown on a magnificent lead throw from his quarterback, Tim Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck with three touchdown passes and has run for another in a sterling performance here in South Bend. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he just you know, run for 25 yards for a touchdown, get called back. Started with with protection. Watch these guys. Absolute perfect protection for Hasselbeck. The other nice thing he does, he gives his receiver, Jamal Burke, a chance to run under. On Clifford Jefferson again. Just blows right by Jefferson. Perfectly led ball by Hasselbeck. Wow. And the extra point is good by John Maddich. Clifford Jefferson burned again. And the Boston College Eagles have a two-touchdown lead as they go for their eighth win of the year on the accurate arm of Tim Hasselbeck. Another jackpot. 
Thousands of BC fans up in the northern end zone uh, cheering the chaps from Chestnut Hill who lead 31 17 and have outscored the Irish 31 to 3 since the middle of the first quarter when Jackson was intercepted Jarius Jackson and the Irish led 14 nothing Julius Jones races up to the 15 yard line. The Irish need something big and the freshman trying to produce finally tackled at the 35 yard line. Let's go back to a perfect touchdown throw. Yeah, but I think the point is, you know, Clifford Jefferson, the corner number 15, has been struggling uh, all, all day. Here he is matched up one on one. You've got to give him some help when your corner is struggling. Unfortunately, it's a blitz. And if you don't get to the quarterback in a blitz, your corner, you know, the old proverbial on an island. He wasn't on the same island as Jamal Burke. Got to give him some help. And Burke again, the young receiver, showing some superb talent for Boston College. Now Jarius Jackson trying to pass off the uh, option fake, and it didn't fool Mike Willits. Mike every day at practice, Willits from Alexandria, Virginia, a big uh, Washington Redskins star, and John Riggins was uh, his man, always wanted to carry the ball. This Frank Speziani, defensive coordinator, and his defense has done a very, very good job. You know, they put two quick drives and touchdowns by the Irish, but since then, his defense has really responded. Second down, 14 on the sack of Jarius Jackson, the 30th sack this year, suffered by Notre Dame. Good throw and a sliding catch Jackson, by Bobby Brown. Brown, but it's short of a first down. A gain of about 11 out to the 41-yard line. Yeah, they should be in their hurry-up offense, really. 11:30 remaining in the ball game. They trail by uh, two touchdowns, so they need to get in and out of that huddle. Shotgun. Lipinski. The back to the right of uh, quarterback Jarius Jackson. O'Leary split out. Oh, yes. oh, 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 Hovan. It was you know, you know one of those zone blitzes where he come, you know instead of rushing he drops back in coverage, and, and you know Hovan was back in coverage. It was going to be thrown to him. Here he is. Takes the rush. Now he's back in coverage. Zone blitz on the outside. Just kind of mistimed his jump. Well, it was ball, deflect, yeah. I believe it was deflected. He was going for it, but the ball came down in a different direction on him. See, he's going over there. Yeah. And the Lost it in his eye black. No, that'll, he'll wake up about 3 o'clock this morning saying, I still oh, that could have been a touchdown. Hit by Hillbold. Fair catch by Green with flags down. Fair catch at the 24. Irish now punting for the seventh time in their last eight possessions and a penalty. I would guess BC will decline that. The position at the 24. <laughs> Illegal motion against the kicking team. A penalty is declined. It'll be BC's ball first and 10 at the end of the kick. You know, but we'll get back to the eye black of Chris <laughs> Hovan and why when we return to Notre Dame. Uh, Boston College playing tough 31 17. Now, I finally got it figured out what I did wrong. I wanted to be a tough player. I had fat cheeks. I had a baby look like yeah. that. I should have done this. That's Chris, Chris Ovan. Yeah. See, you're going to be an All American. You can't have a baby yeah. face. So, what do you do? You come up with a little style. Oh, is that style? I know what that is. Yeah. That's, it wow. makes him look tougher, though. That's, you, you know, well, you know, the other shot, he looks like he's about to carry out your groceries you know, to your car. Thank you very much, Mr. Hayden. <laughs> 31-17, Hasselbeck not staying on the ground, and Jefferson almost with a pick. Well, that's the thing about that position, Dick. You know, you, you can give up a couple of touchdowns, but you're still out there. You still have to play, and you got to respond, you know. That says something about Tom O'Brien willing to take some chances with a two-touchdown lead. Yeah, a little bit surprised, though, as good as his offensive line is playing right now. I mean, uh, grind out a few first downs if you can. The double tight end set. Both their tight ends are pretty good blockers, too. The scores on uh, this big day of football, Florida State and Florida in that interstate battle. Fumble! And Hasselbeck, who has been in the right place at the right time with the right stuff, all day recovers. And the right decision. Again, he didn't try to pick it up, make something happen. You know, you know you're up by two touchdowns, just fall on it. Perfect pitch. Again, there's not much penetration there, as you can see. Perfect pitch there that Rose should have uh, gathered. 
then, you know, when you're up by two, you just get on it and uh, live for another day. But I know uh, the fans back in one of the great cities in this nation, Boston, would rather I not mention this, but they did lead Miami 28 to nothing late in the third quarter at Boston College and lost. And uh, so a 14 point lead. Yeah, you meant very much fun. The throw incomplete and good coverage by Sanders. Uh, Johnny Sanders, the senior, able to reach in and deny the tight end Robert Ellis. Johnny Sanders, his last game here at Notre Dame Stadium, and uh, he is number five. He was ready to, to leave after in his freshman years. Didn't think he could handle here at Notre Dame. Was, had bags packed. And Jimmy Friday, a linebacker, a couple years ahead of him, convinced him to stay. And he said to us a couple weeks ago, it was the proudest thing and the best thing I did. Well, they only had the ball. The Eagles about a minute. Three and out. And a good solid kick by McKyler. Here comes Julius Jones. It can't quite outrun at Ordway. Again. Yeah, Jonathan Ordway, and only the speed of Ordway denied what could have been a yeah. lengthy return. Irish have it. Just under 10 minutes remain. Welcome back. You old timers will remember there's a connection, coaching connection, Boston College, Notre Dame. How about the legendary Frank Leahy? He coached at BC two years, starting in 1939. 20 wins, two losses with the Eagles. And Leahy came here to South Bend and coached the Irish 11 years, six unbeaten years, five national titles, 39 game unbeaten streak in the late 1940s. Frank Leahy, one of the great coaches all time, and his sculpture outside at Notre Dame Stadium on the western side. Tom O'Brien at age 51. Resurrecting the Boston College program. How big would this be? However, there's plenty of time. Ten minutes to go as Jarius Jackson fires down the middle and a sliding catch by Bobby Brown. Well, he has that one patented. Yeah. Just you know the low ball that can't get tipped, can't get picked off. It's kind of a, one of those skinny post patterns, and just throw the ball away from the defender, throw it a little bit low, and let Bobby Brown go down to get it. They throw it mostly to Joey Getherall. This time he's looking to his left to find Bobby Brown. Good passing lane in there, right, right of it's almost a triangle, a triangle of defenders. 21 yards to the 40 of Boston College. Jackson under pressure, gets it off to Fisher, and Fisher, another first down, 11 more to the 29, into the grasp of Frank Chamberlain. I'll tell you, this, this Notre Dame team, Dick, as we have seen this year, is a very determined team. I mean, they don't seem to panic even when they're down. They're down 31-17 right now. They just kind of keep plugging away, and they've, they've uh, played very well in the fourth quarter of their ball games. Oh, Van said, I, I use this because it reminds me that it's my war paint that I want to go to war for four quarters for my team. Fisher now flanked out. Jackson first down from the 29. Underneath to Givens and Givens a five-yard game to the 24 into the arms of Jerome Ledbetter. Well, remember Tom O'Brien said to us this week that this is such a big game for us and our kids. He said most of our guys, if they had been given the opportunity to play at Notre Dame, they would have gone there. He said three quarters of our team would have played at Notre Dame if they could have. And he said, you know, we're kind of considered the other Catholic school. This game means a lot to us. especially with a heartbreaking loss of a year ago, which was the down game of the season for the Eagles. Second and five, Jarius Jackson in a crowd and smothered now on the sack with a vicious defensive rush led by sophomore Kevin Crane from Wixom, Michigan, played at Wald Lake Western. Well, they, you know, started with pretty good coverage because early in that play, it looked like Jarius Jackson had pretty good protection. So a blitz on, so good man for man coverage because of the blitz. And big old 94, Kevin Crane in there, and Bovan number 95. Going against, I think, Volers that time. Getting the edge. And now Jackson and the Irish staring at third down 16. Four man rush, Jackson steps up. But nothing there as he's tackled at the 32-yard line. And Jerome Ledbetter again making the play. And he's uh, one of the many young, talented Eagles 
Only a freshman, red shirt. Well, Jerry, if they're going to go to a bowl, they're going to have to convert this fourth down. Bobby Brown, number 88 in this last play, just a pinch open. Just a pinch open. And uh, you're right, here's a play for a bowl. You're highly unlikely that they could recover if they can't convert. Jackson got his man Brown. First down at the 14. They have done this a lot. Remember, just under seven minutes remaining this ball game. Plenty of time. Now there is. Wouldn't have been if that had not been completed. Absolutely. You're right. You called it. Well, Bobby Brown opened two plays in a row. The last one would have been a touchdown. And the drive zone defense. Uh, Ordway just kind of lets him go and get his job. A good protection allowed Jackson the time to find him. At the 14-yard line, 6.43 left. Good speed up to the right side. Leaves only Fisher in the backfield. Take the hit. Wide open is good speed. Touchdown. Flag down. down, but we'll see if it counts. Boy, I thought Ramon Johnson was going to get there. That ball was in the air. It looked like a punt, not a pass. The flag thrown. Yep, illegal man. Oh, my. Ineligible receiver downfield. Well, it's the hazard of a quarterback who scrambles as much as Jerry S. Jackson, and you get an inexperienced lineman. Ineligible receiver downfield gets the offense. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Remains first down. See if we can find out uh, how it all developed. As Jackson fakes, and you never know when he's going to tuck it away and run. That's going to be downfield yet. Where's the guy downfield? He's an eligible receiver. He's an eligible. I don't see anybody. Those are all guys downfield are eligible receivers. Unless I, I missed something. There wasn't any lineman downfield. Perhaps one of the uh, eligible receivers was covered. So Jackson goes to work on first and 15. Underneath to the tight end O'Leary. And he's tackled inside the five. It'll be first and goal or very close to it. Right at the four yard line. Every time you think you have them knocked out, you don't. I mean, team after team after team. Dan O'Leary, the high school teammate of Chris Hovan. That's a heck of a catch by Dan O'Leary. He has really played well the second half of the year for the Irish. The 11th catch of the season that spots the ball just shy of the first down. Brings up third now. As the evening air chills here in northern Indiana. And the Irish trying to heat up their offense and recover from 14 down with just 618 left. Both teams have all timeouts remain. It is second down and one. Givens in the backfield with Fisher. Two tight ends. And now it's Givens out to the left. A good receiver. Jackson looking for him. Oh, he shoots him. He uh, was under heavy pressure. Dan O'Leary was also in there as drilled as he threw the ball. And uh, tough to find your man when you're looking up at the dark sky. Yeah, Antonio Garay, number 85, got most of Jarius Jackson. Right here, right here. Mm -hmm. Boy, was he open. Mm. Every week he's gone through that. He's needed that 235 pounds away. He's been belted around. And uh, flags fly. It appeared that uh, the Eagles jumped first, and then a Notre Dame lineman reacted. Boy, well, instead of going third and one, if, if it is against the Irish, third and six, I mean, that's a critical penalty. If indeed, it's uh, against Notre Dame. Mm, wow. They were at second and one, then they were third and one, now they're third and six. 
And they mark it back out to the nine yard line. Good ball, false start against the offense. You know, a five yard penalty from the previous spot remains third down. Jake, I've noticed a lot of times this year, Notre Dame, when he gets in these situations, they seem to try to go on long counts down there inside the 10 yard line. I, I just don't think you want to do that with offensive linemen who are anxious to get the ball snapped in short yardage situations. And uh, in the case today, inexperienced yeah, linemen. Right. Oh, Fisher out to the slot right. Jackson from the nine. To Bobby Brown. Knocked away. Ramon Johnson able to make the defensive play for Boston College, and that brings up fourth down. And again, the situation for Notre Dame, a must play. Yeah, and, you know, the penalty put him in the situation. Remember, they were at second in less than a yard. Tried the passing play. That didn't work. Then the penalty. And then that th this play, I think you need to try to maybe underthrow this ball a little bit. Let Bobby Brown out jump a defender. Bobby Brown is 6'2", and Johnson's 5'11". And I think it's one where you throw you kind of in the middle of the end zone, let him go up. Oh, from the nine-yard line, fourth down and six. He's open. Fisher, touchdown! Talented teams, but boy, they, they, play hard. they play hard. They are determined, and God love them. They just don't quit. Now the extra point by Sanson, and these are critical too. Notre Dame's missed four on the season. Oh no! Number five that's hit the, the left upright. That's the 16th missed field goal of Jim Sanson this year. Missed extra point. Excuse me. Missed extra point. 16th missed extra point. So they make it all the more difficult, Notre Dame, to tie. They have to score another touchdown and make a two-point play. Dead center on the left upright. Sanson misses for the fifth time an extra point, Notre Dame, this year. So Boston College leads 31-23. Sanson's extra point hitting the upright may have been deflected. Uh, we'll take another look at it. Sanson to kick it off. Boston College not expecting an onside kick. They have only five men up. And William Green deep. Along with Dewan Daniels. It's to Daniels side at the three. And he's out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Boston uh, offense comes on the field. Let's check that extra point. Well, let's go back to the touchdown first, and then we'll go back to the extra point. Uh, again, the fourth and four. I mean, the, the determined, resilient Irish. Find, uh, he finds Tony Fish, who's developed in a really good receiver uh, coming out of the backfield for the touchdown. This extra point to put him down by seven. Good snap, good hold. I think it's hit. It's deflected. Yeah, it, that get pushed left. So that really wasn't Jim Sanson. A lot of inside pressure. Because, you know, the ball is kicked, you know, goes end over end, and then you're going to see it kind of uh, wobbling out of there. It was, I think it was deflected by Mike Willits. But they, as you mentioned, Dick, uh, makes, means the Irish have to hold, score, and make a two-point conversion. Well, and it uh, just takes uh, so much of the emotion away from the crowd. They're cheering a chance now for the extra points good, a tie or a two-point mm -hmm. uh, play wins it for you. And now that... Uh, Makes the uh, the bullseye a little smaller for Notre Dame, trailing by eight. So as they attend to the uh, wounded uh, Boston College player, uh, we'll take this break. Back at Notre Dame, where Boston College leads 31-23 with under six minutes remaining. They attend to the injured special teamer for Boston College, who was hit in the. Uh, one of the blockers on the return. And uh, well, we're not sure who it is, unfortunately, but uh, the concern is quite obvious. I think it's over here on the right side. Right there. It's Jonathan Aber of the of Notre Dame, number 48. Who uh, fighting off the block, and as you can see, uh, 
immediate yeah. uh, injury. Hmm. Obvious concern of all. Unusual that the blocking player and the yeah, defensive right, so player trying to, you know, break the wedge and they're gonna bring out a stretcher or the cart. Mm. It's like a knockout punch. It's a. Uh, I think all players know that you're always at risk. It's kind of a precarious thing, and well, that's good. There's mm -hmm. a movement. And uh, as everyone hopes for the very best, uh, we must always remind ourselves that. Fortunately, in today's football world, all precautions are taken. And while all of this appears to be the very worst, actually, it's for the very best. There were times when athletes were handled uh, just abusively when they were injured. It was almost like, well, get up and run off mm -hmm. the field, no matter how seriously you may be injured. All precautions are, are taken. And I know Jim Gray will be. Uh, there to get the first word that uh, will allow us to uh, share and we're not even certain as to the injured player we never really quite got a clean look at his number now they very delicately uh, make sure that he's placed on that stretcher The helplessness uh, of all, isn't it, that uh, intensifies uh, these moments? Some very anxious uh, parents I know back in Boston. Shut up! And uh, we're not trying to disguise the identification. Yeah, we, we don't, don't know, know, and we don't, don't want to take it. a chance on uh, guessing. Uh, the, the one obvious uh, rule here is to take one's time. There's no no hurry. Make sure it's all done right. Hey Dick, it's, uh, I've been in a lot of situations like that, and it's tough to go from that moment to the next violent moment. Very, very tough. Boston College players, uh, most of them off the sidelines, uh, not giving plenty of room, but obviously. Uh, Concern for their teammate. And we will do our best to get a uh, get a report. And Jim Gray's in the area. He'll be able to identify the injured uh, Boston College player. Here's that they are talking to him, so he is conscious.
understand that they were saying uh, go get him Todd in uh, 53 we saw five is Todd McNiff Todd McNiff from Wayne New Jersey the freshman uh, defensive lineman so back to the action and Will Green to the 32 yard line and Brad Williams makes the tackle. Let's go to Jim Gray for the report. All right, Dick, it is Todd McNiff, number 53. All the doctors from Boston College will tell us right now is that he is moving all of his extremities. He is conscious, and that's all they'll tell us now. They're taking him to the hospital. We'll try and get some further information. Dick? Well, that is good news if indeed Sounds he's good, moving yeah. uh, all the extremities. Second down, five. Five minutes to go. job defensively Brad made the tackle but it was Lance Legree who invaded the backfield and uh, misdirected the play well remember in, in the prior series long before the injury Boston College only had a three and out only used 68 seconds now they're, they're facing another three and out again at a critical time when you have a dominant offensive lineman but, but uh, Lamont Bryant in his last game at Notre Dame Stadium makes a critical stop of the yard, third and six. 423, 422 left. Tim Hasselbeck. Into the flat to Burks, the fullback, but he had to leave his feet to make the catch and does not have the first down at the 34 yard line. And so, uh, with, with under four minutes, Notre Dame will get the ball back down by eight points. Back goes Julius Jones to return and freshman punter Kevin McMyler a poor snap last time Dick That's right a, not a one hopper it came back on two or three Ryan Ard is the snapper or Ryan Birch actually Short kick Jones gambles and it pays off One to beat 40 30 can anyone catch him no, no more game touchdown. And little brother just got his team right back in the ball game with a 67 yard return and the Irish will be attempting their what their fourth two point yep. conversion They're fifth. one yeah. actually fifth. fifth one for three this year there it is 31 29 three yards away from tying it with three and a half minutes left. Oh my. <laughs> it deserves it Omar. It really does. Lots of time. Now the throw. Incomplete. And Boston College can now cry. Oh my. They still lead 31-29. Oh Gather all the shortest receiver at the back end of the end zone unable to get to it. You know, I really thought Jarius Jackson was going to try to run it in. Getherall's number 18. He's back underneath the goal post. You should have one guy at the front of the end zone, one guy at the back of the end zone. He just slipped trying to come, you know, stop and catch his little bit behind him. But but look at the lanes here. I thought maybe Jarius Jackson might try to run. Oh, okay, number 54, the, the middle linebacker, Scott Bradley, really uh, made this ball go a little bit higher than Jarius wanted to throw it. Those little things you never know. You stick a hand up what it's going to do. Well, you know, still even with that play, 3:27 remaining. Tim Hasselbeck has to grind out a few first downs, and if you ever wanted a good offensive line, Dick, this is a situation where you wanted to have a good offensive line. 
If you're a Notre Dame uh, season ticket holder, did you get your money's <laughs> worth at home this year? <laughs> With one exception, every game has been like this. And for that matter, how about Boston College's season? If they had any bad games. I tell you, just really bad for traffic, though, <laughs> these games, you know? Nobody leaves early. And LBC will have a chance to protect that two-point lead as Sanson delivers to the five. And here comes DeWan Daniels. And Daniels... To the 27 yard line, and Jonathan Abair yeah, makes a good it. tackle. Yeah. Walk on. Well, there he is, the walk on who's uh, blocked a punt this year. I believe this is his last game at Notre Dame Stadium. And the works uh, of the job practices, uh, 3.8 GPA. Well, the Eagles have their own uh, Jonathan Abair and John Elvis Bolantrelli, a walk-on senior linebacker from Vero Beach. They took him on the trip because of his play, his contributions. Give to Green, protecting the ball to the 30-yard line. Again, a little more than three before a Johnny Sanders can make the tackle. And there's the man they call Elvis. Hard to see it now, but as a freshman, he had so much hair and no money to cut it and no way to find a barber. The coaches yeah. didn't know his name and said, hey, you, do walk on Elvis. Hey, Elvis, get in there. So that's, uh, that's his moniker. Long pork chops. You know, every team has guys like that, the walk-ons that help you prepare. I, mean, I, I roomed with a walk-on guy by the name of Joe Collins at S SC and got in for one play against Notre Dame and still talks about it. Yeah. Got hammered. What did he say? I've no more than a glorified blocking yeah. dummy for four years. Yeah. And here he is. They put him in at the end of the West Virginia game and Lo and behold, he makes a tackle. <laughs> and uh, his roommate, Tim Hasselbeck, <laughs> comes over to <laughs> celebrate. Well, he talked about the uh, the code of the walk-on, Dick. I like that. He said it's his code. He said, one, never complain. Two, never be late. And three, go hard in every play. And when you think about it, mm -hmm. pretty good philosophy yeah, for life, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Don't be late. Don't complain and go hard every play. For a report, Jim. Dick, some more information on Todd uh, McNiff. He was taken to St. Joe's Medical Center here in South Bend, Indiana. They're going to x-ray his neck. They've kept it immobilized. The doctors say he is conscious. However, he is somewhat confused, and they want to take every precaution. But again, his extremities are all moving. All right, great Dick. news. Uh, that's good news, Jim. Thank you. Now Hasselbeck. Throws to his tight end Ellis, and Robert Ellis bumped out of bounds, and that stops the clock. Boy. Joe Ferrer made the hit. Well, Joe Ferrer did a good job of, of stopping the clock by forcing the uh, receiver out of bounds. And again, if you're Boston College, if you're working those boundaries, you're, you're beginning to you want to work your way to the middle of the field. You don't want to be uh, anywhere near the boundaries. 304 remaining, and a critical third and what? Third and five, third and four. It's a long four. The 33 yard line. Big, big play. Jamal Burke way out to the left. Jefferson on him. There's a takedown. It's a penalty against Boston College. This one's going to come back as the fullback, Ryan Birch. First down yardage to the 48. But uh, yeah, Brad big Brad Williams. Williams was tackled as he went in on the quarterback. Yeah, no, no dispute. I think uh, we all saw it. It was the old Heimlich maneuver on Brad Williams, number 77 of the Irish. He's right here. And that's Cook, no, Michael Cook, who's played so well. Oops, he can't get to my quarterback. Yeah, he's holding. It's the offense. Ten yards assessed at the previous spot remains third down. Oh. And the student body on its feet. Jenny, let's go, Irish. Third down, 14. Again, I think if you're Tom O'Brien and Dana Bible, the offensive quarter, one more time, you're looking for a matchup. You're trying to get Jamal Burke maybe against Clifford Jefferson. They've had success on it all day. This time it's uh, Derek Crittenden who's right. out to the left. And Burke to the right. 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 D. Cooper moves over on him. Yeah. 
throw is complete but short of the first down to the tight end Brian oh, Arndt. Boy, it's going to be just short if it's short. Mm. Yeah, it's, the spot is about a yard shy, it would appear from our angle, maybe closer. What a gun by Hasselbeck on that one. And Brian Art, was well, you know, that five catches now for Brian Art, the tight end? Five indeed. Six. Yeah, one touchdown catch and. And one big play on the deflection yeah, that saved a possible interception. Well, that was a tight throw, good coverage there. I think it was Donald Dykes on him. Mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be short. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the Navy game? Notre Dame had made it by, what, an inch? And, and now they stop him by three inches. Uh, you've got yeah. a punt here. Yeah. And Julius Jones back on the field. And very few seated now here at Notre Dame. They're on their feet as it comes down to the 244 mark. Well, you, you have to force a directional punt. You can't punt it just directly to Julius. Don't make him move either right or left. And these gunners down here, they've got to have some coverage. Those wide guys, one of them's uh, Ordway. Jones, a punt return for touchdown, 67 yards, the first in three years for Notre Dame. Who are you coming after here? Kevin McMyler, freshman putter. Using up some time and sends up a high wobbler that Jones fair catches at the 27 yard line. 36 yard punt. Bob Davies Irish with two minutes, 18 seconds to get into field goal range. Well, the return a moment ago with a 67 yard stick uh, by Julius Jones. Good seam right up the middle. Sap number 20 puts a good block, a little stop and go. Still carrying that ball in his right arm. They'll, they'll, they'll change that at some point. Make sure he changes it to his left arm. He always carries it in his right. Now it's up to Jarius Jackson. He got one more big comeback win in him. Oh. Almost intercepted oh. as uh, Mike Willits up high to. Oof. Almost like a basketball rebounder. Yeah. He's the guy I think that deflected that extra point a few moments ago. 6'4, 281 pound senior from Alexandria, Virginia. Mm. Good leaper. <laughs> 2 11 remaining in the ballgame. Two point lead by Boston College. Mm. Gibbons and Getherall to the right, Brown to the left, Fisher in the slot. Over the middle, oh. intercepted. It is Pedro Serino, the tri captain. He said, I've been aching all year. I've had some chances and no interceptions. I can't believe it. Well, he came up with a big one today. Isn't it interesting? Free safeties the last two years have come up with a big play. For Notre Dame a year ago, it was Dee Cooper. And for the Boston College Eagles, their four year starter, tri captain. Pedro Serino reads the eyes of Jarius Jackson and seals the fate, apparently, of Notre Dame. His sixth career interception, the senior from Jersey City, St. Peter's Prep. Mm -hmm. Boy, he, he had a read. That was, that was a, either a poor route or a poor throw by Jarius Jackson. Yeah, Fisher hadn't even looked for no. the ball. Boy. So the Eagles have it at the Irish 25-yard line. Now Notre Dame has only two timeouts remaining. Green for about three, and Notre Dame will spend one of those timeouts at the 159 mark. Oh, the Boston College Eagles trying to make it eight and two on the season, assuring themselves of the at least a date in Tucson just before the new year in the Inside.com Bowl. Well, the extra point that was deflected by Willits, number 98. I mean, that really changed the entire complexion for the last few minutes. At the risk of getting a bit ahead of ourselves, uh, they're talking about Oklahoma in that inside.com uh, bowl. Mm -hmm. With the uh, BC's opponent. 
They've got Virginia Tech on Friday and uh, unbeaten Tech defeated Temple today 62 to 7. That's going to be an interesting ball game. But I think really what Tim Hasselbeck is concerned about right now is getting this 159 remaining the game off. Career yeah. highs for Tim Hasselbeck, 272 yards. Said and, uh, any good for a kid that wanted to go to Notre, Notre Dame, Dame, really considered yeah. Notre Dame, then thought, you know, the offense isn't my style. I'm more of a drop-back passer and elected to stay home at Boston College and join his brother. Just hold on to the ball and tell your backs. Green, the freshman. And uh, <laughs> that is a bit risky. A yeah. first-year player with uh, lots yeah. of energy, a lot of yep. adrenaline, and might go for the extra yard where the defense can... Uh, force the fumble yeah, and, and not securing the ball I mean you love the enthusiasm and he's going to be a very good player he's had some good short yardage runs today but goodness hold on to that ball with uh, both arms now Notre Dame uses their last time out and uh, with a first down his third and well, less than one here they can uh, seal the game if they can convert a one minute 49 seconds remaining no timeouts for Notre Dame now the job Tom O'Brien has done, we have talked about it, Dick, three years ago. This team was a mess. And he has absolutely done an incredible job resurrecting the program at Boston College. Yeah, just to uh, complete some business today, Chevrolet players of the game, Tim Hasselbeck from Boston College, Julius Jones from Notre Dame. Recognition of their effort, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund and beginning this year of course Chevrolet also donates a thousand dollars to the high schools of the honorees uh, big stone gap Xavier High School Julius Jones and Powell Valley High School for Tim Hasselbeck in uh, well actually from Xavier and Xavier and brothers in Norfolk Massachusetts his high school will receive one thousand dollars on third down that's it and green has the first down and now it's only a matter of kneeling down for boston college and tom o'brien will go home with perhaps his biggest win well, there's that, 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 that sign up that was all over the boston college locker room this week uh, in remembrance of the heartbreaking loss the eagles had a year ago and the other side of the story is that notre dame will not go bowling uh, the best they could look for is a 6 6 season as they go against the Stanford team with that high powered pass offense out in Palo Alto next weekend. Well, the only thing that would make this better for Boston College is they find out that Todd McNiff is in great health. Amen. And uh, Boston College will well, take the delay of game as the clock down to 116 as they're going to milk every second. Well, they could have just knelt. I'm not sure why they put the penalty. They still can kneel a couple of times to get it over with. 12th man, yeah. That's a. Well, he yes. must have read that schedule. He said, you know, November 20th <laughs> is when it all wrapped up. Final home game. <laughs> Who knows what might be uh, hidden in yeah, that turf. It's, it's, you can't hide much more camera than can you? Uh oh. There's some big offensive linemen. You don't want to go over there. Yeah. Fair ball, delay of game, offense. Five yards remains first down. Got good outside speed. <laughs> He's tired. I get him in shape. Where's that tree when you need it? When they play Stanford next you week. Know, I, I'm, I'm really proud of you. You didn't <laughs> use one nut joke. <laughs> well, it's too obvious. At the 10, <laughs> at the 5, <laughs> first and goal at the 2, nose yeah. to the goal line, oh my! <laughs> oh, this is your favorite play of the quarterback. Hesselbeck with one kneel down to bring up second down. Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Must be wondering what's all the noise about. Here's a coach uh, about to enjoy one of his biggest, if not his biggest, win as a head coach. 20 uh, some years uh, understudy to George Welsh is uh, his assistant at Navy and at the University of Virginia and gives him great credit. And he said, Yeah, came back down to the basics. The first rule when I got to Boston College was they didn't know how to practice. Yep. And I had to start with uh, practice and the, that old adage, you know, practice as you play. Mm -hmm. 
And that's his theory. It was as simple as that in trying to rebuild this program. Well, he felt that, uh, you know, they could really become a dominant force in the Big East. Every other conference seemed to have a dominant team or two. He said, hey, we can become that dominant team in the Big East. And as a coach at Virginia, playing Virginia Tech every year, it won't be a new experience for him going uh, down to Blacksburg. 20 seconds. Look at these uh, Boston yeah, College yeah. kids. How big is this for them? Look at them. <laughs> Doing somersaults on the <laughs> sidelines. Well, that school better get out of there. Boston College, 10 point underdogs, have won it 31 29. Tim Hasselbeck leading the Eagles to victory here against Notre Dame, and he's with Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Dick. Tim, congratulations. Thank you. you guys built up that big lead. Tell us about your two big passes to Burke. Uh, he just did a great job of winning on the line. He was getting pressed, and uh, he got open and made a great play. And uh, Great catch, wasn't it? It was a great catch, great route, and, uh, you know, people didn't believe in us, but now we're 8-2, and people might start believing in us now. How nervous were you as Notre Dame came roaring back here and cut to within two? I mean, we've been in that position before where people have been coming back on us. We just knew we had to stick together. Our defense would come up with a big play. Pedro Serrano has been a great player at BC for four years. Came up with a huge play the other game. How about Virginia Tech now, the number two team in the country? That's right, the number two team in the country. They might be the number one team in the country. So, uh, you know, we obviously know we have our work cut out for us for the short week, and uh, just going to go down there and give it our best shot.